the Catred.org podcast, your weekly guide to the world of esports news, presented by Richard Lewis. Right, the podcast was on hiatus for a bit, but uh, it's back now, and the reason it was on hiatus was just um, sort of recovering from a, a very busy workload and uh, having to deal with the usual um, threats and, and abuse that gets hurled uh, the Cadred staff, and in particular my way, ahead of an I-series. So much love to the 786 community, uh, will be deploying my Kevlar. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do today, again, we like to keep the podcast as fresh and invigorating as we can. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have an iSeries kind of focused preview, and we're going to get members from each of the teams to come on, uh, talk up their chances, talk down other people's chances. We'll try and get a few on at the same time, uh, so they can slag each other off and we can sit back all voyeuristic and enjoy it. Um, but first things first... There has been a lot of news to get through, because obviously there's been two weeks between this and the last DSWC-focused podcast, so uh, we need to catch up, and that means it's time for Newswatch. 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 Counter-Strike Source. All right, up first is the Counter-Strike Source news, and uh, with me to go over all the big stories is, of course, my right-hand man, Michael Ricky McGee, the uh, assistant editor uh, of the uh, Cadred website that you all love so much. So uh, the week started off with uh, a Z block fix kind of coming out with 4.66. Um, you've had a dabble on the servers. What did you make of it? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I, I didn't really notice there wasn't any major changes. So uh, as far as I know, it was just like minor fixes. So there wasn't really much to write home about. But yeah, Every change is a good change, and it's always improving, so it's good to see they're still working on it. What about the uh, dramatic headshots thing? Have you had a go on that? I've not even switched on yet, so I couldn't be able to tell you. But it, it does seem like a cool idea. I do like the one uh, 1.6 animation. So I, um, I saw a, a few of the um, YouTube videos that people were uploading, and there, there was obviously still some work to be done on it, I think, um, with the ragdolls. You know, people were like kind of freezing in midair when they were getting shot and their bodies were just kind of staying there and stuff. So, But, uh, you know, I think it'd be nice if we could bring the aesthetics of 1.6 to CSS. I wouldn't say it's a must-have, but it's certainly the best thing, I think, that came out of the Pro Mod project yeah. was kind of the way that, the, you know, the aesthetic qualities of uh, the way bullets would register on surfaces and models uh the way the models kind of moved and that so it'd be nice if it could come off i just don't think it will it your source engine and 1.6 is just so dramatically different i don't see match, does it? yeah i just don't see how you can get the physics to match up but uh other than that there's been no generally well, what happens is when there's a z block update it's like p- people panic and the, then point out there's something going wrong and then there's an exploit and then there's this nothing like that this time around yeah, there's been no chaos yet. But while we're on the subject of YouTube videos, I saw one posted on the media section the other day uh, from a guy called Devi or Devi or yeah, the Finnish guy. Yeah, and he actually he sent me a PM asking me to publicise his video because something needs to be seen. But I'm just it's good to see a video that's well made and actually points out a problem rather than just like a moan at something that they don't know actually exists. Uh, I would check it out in the media section. It sort of explains the why recoil looks jerky and source after the update. Uh, and I think it'd be good if C Block or Valve would take a look at that. Well, I, I guess I—I I don't know. I, I watched the video. I'll, I'll be honest; it didn't really say a lot to me I, that I didn't see as being in the realms of kind of common sense. And I think to call it a bug, it's stretching it a bit, isn't it? It's just—I I wouldn't call it a bug. I think it's just you know how sort of resistant top players are to change, and mm. they aren't willing to sort of change the tiniest part of their game. And I think this would just sort of make it look as it did before, while sort of still being as it is now, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, it, we'll definitely uh, uh, pr- promote that then. So, uh, what's well, in the media section still, is it? Recall problem in CS Source, it's called. All right. Media section. Okay, well, uh, that'll get him lots of YouTube hits, so he'll be a happy bunny, no doubt. Uh, the next uh, story, moving on from the wonderful <laughs> world of Zeblock, uh, Beasts 
take the last resort. This, of course, referring to uh, the former Bindip's Band of Merry Men team that were with TLR and had had a bit of a rough and rocky road and now been poached by uh, the Beasts organisation to replace the team that's now at Fragmasters Toxic, just to make sure everyone's following the great scene shuffle. Uh, what did you make of this move? Do you think it's a good one for Beasts or a better one for the team that have moved to them? Six months ago, you'd have thought they were absolutely mental to switch TLR for an organisation like Beasts. I mean, they're completely unknown, but they have proven that they do give support to their teams. I think they just sort of, for MSK and the now FM Toxic at the last event, they just gave them some cash to sort of to do their own thing with, to pay for their hotels and stuff. So they do cough up money, uh, something that TLR weren't doing. So it's definitely a good move for the team. Uh, and again, it's, it's a good move for the organisation because they're a solid team that's been together for a, a long time now. Obviously, TLR have been quite heavily featured on CADRED. Um, my article seemed to have caused a, a bit of a stir and uh, with one or two uh, people in particular that are friends with Chef. And I, I say that, pretty much just two people in particular um, have got very upset. One of them might say they'd get CADRED shut down. Yeah, one of them did say he'd have me fired and CADRED shut down, yes. Nothing, nothing's come of that. Sorry, guys. This yeah. is the last podcast. Oh, yeah, I, I guess. Um, he, he's, you know, taking it seriously, I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he thinks I'm doing wrong by, by expressing an opinion in a piece of editorial, but th- there we are. Um, I, I don't know. Look, the, the way I look at it is it's just... it's When it was just a cyclical TLR, go to land, do well, team gets poached because they're not contracted... Um, or team folds because they were only using Chef uh, for a mix. You know, happy days, right? I mean, like I wouldn't say close the organisation down because of that. I would say just wise up. You know, just wise up and do yeah. things differently the next time. And if you don't, then you're just being stupid. And that harms ultimately nobody but yourself. But recently, the recurring story has been send a team to an event, promise them a hotel, hotel doesn't materialise, team has to pay for the hotel with their own money, or send a team to land, tell them we're going to give them uh, super-duper, top-of-the-range laptops, laptops don't turn up, manager doesn't turn up, or go to land with a team, uh, address none of the issues that you might want to uh, if you're a manager and spend most of it drunk and hobnobbing with, with other esports people. It's not, for me, good practice. And I just think if you're going to do something sloppily, it, there is a point where you have to say it's actually starting to impact on the, you know, the, the, the perception of UK sports as a whole. It's certainly not good for the players that have now had to move organisations and aren't able to attend I-44 uh, because of negotiating techniques that make no sense to me. So, uh, yeah, it just seems to me like, you know, it's not a vendetta. It's not malicious it's just the fact that right now tlr isn't being run in a sensible manner at all and if you're gonna waste people's time like that then you're better off just stopping it yeah as you say it's it's not a case of the uh, chef being malicious in any way it's simply just sloppiness and it's sort of down the ineptitude if you will it might sound quite harsh but when it starts costing teams and causing problems for teams and players, then it becomes a problem for everyone. So I think it's a, a wise move for them to jump ship. And I think it'd be a wise move for Chef to maybe take a break and sort of look at his, at what he's doing with himself again. Well, yeah, exactly that. And it's not that I don't think Michael has, hasn't got anything at all to offer eSports. I mean, I'd be at a loss to express exactly what it is at this particular moment in time. Laughs. But, uh, yeah, but, you know... Uh, I, it's you know he obviously enjoys it and wants to stay involved. I just think run, the day-to-day pressures of running an organisation, something I've done myself, um, uh, a bit beyond him as, as as things stand right now. So that's just my take on it. Some people might feel differently, but I like to think the proof of the puddings in yeah, the eating. And it would have been nice to have seen uh, this team at I44. And as I said, they're not there purely and simply because Michael. Uh, you know, had an offer of sponsorship that would have got the team there, but then wanted to try and negotiate for something more, and there was no more forthcoming. Yeah, backfired. Yeah, it backfired hideously, and now they're not going to be at an event, and we don't know when we will see them at an event. Have Beasts given any indication as to? Yeah, I think it's almost guaranteed that they'll be at the Epic Land in mm. February, I think, and then they should be the next IC this as well. So 
you've got plenty of time to practice and maybe sort of hit the form that they reached before joining TLR. Okay, well, let's uh, hope that works out. Next story, we'll go across the Atlantic and we'll come to uh, the replacement of Sam Days the Marine by Justin mm. Sunman Summy. Um, I, I know you had plenty to say about this because it seemed to me that everyone was turning around and saying it was a bad move. Ridiculous to think that. I think it's an excellent move. Mm. I mean, it's, it's no way sort of a, a bad thing for days. I'm not trying to be harsh on him. I mean, he performed just as well as the rest of his team did at ESWC. And he did well at ECA as well. Oh, sorry, it wasn't even that ECA. Uh, ESWC. Yeah, I know what you mean. But uh, I think they had too many players that were the big fraggers. I mean, you've got Frost, TCK, Neil. Uh, and Steele, who all like to go mad, and Days was another one of those players, and they needed that sort of calm and influence who just did his job and tidied up. Uh, and Sunman is the perfect player for that. Uh, although he's a rifler and they're swapping a rifler for an opera, mm. uh, they've still got two like, highly qualified oppers in the team that can do a job. So. Well, I, I remember when Sunman was replaced by Steele. Uh, Dynamic. Yeah, in dynamic, and you remember that video, that ridiculous video that went up, um, you know, kind of highlighting the the, the supposed uh, deficiencies of uh, one player over the other. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, I don't know what you have to do to get get your due, uh, because I've always thought some man to be a really, you know, underrated player, someone that's co- a consistent rifler, um, someone that's been instrumental in playing in. You know the the number one team in the continent, like which he's now done on two occasions, because he was part of the dynamic, and obviously now he's part of uh, fully talked stroke check six, depending on whatever they're calling themselves 3D Max. today. Um, yeah, or three D Max, I should say. Yeah, we're coming to that in a second. Um, so I don't know. It, it, when is he going to get his due? I mean, it's long overdue. He's probably the most experienced player currently playing in America. Uh, he played 1.6 at the very highest level. Everyone remembers that that shot he got on train. He's played in the CGS and he's been at the top level like, since he started playing, basically. Mm. Uh, there's got to be a reason for that. So, I don't know, it's just a matter of time. Hopefully people start giving him some props when he starts attending some more European events with the team. Well, that's likely to happen now that the team has moved to 3D Max. What a wild pickup this is. I mean, I I, must have been doing some good networking in Paris. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It probably explains why I didn't see many of them. Uh, I I mean, I talked to Josh about this uh, to Steele. He was um, saying, you know, that he'd done, uh, you know, some some talking to a lot of people while he was there and was using the opportunity to get to know people. I had no idea that maybe they were looking. Uh, to be supported by a European organisation. Can this move succeed? I'm always leery about, um, you know, European support of North yeah, American teams. It's always vitriolic when they picked up an American team. It's just a sort of publicity stunt. It was before they sort of crashed and burned. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if it can work. I mean, the American scene is picking up, so there is like a constant stream of tournaments for them to go to at least. Uh I don't know, I just hope they get a European line out of it, and then I couldn't really care if it lasts any longer than that or not. I just want to see them maybe at the Copenhagen Games in April. Uh, yeah, well, I just um, I'll quote what uh, Trey TCK Martin said about it. Uh, we began talks with 3D Max prior to SWC during our panic search for funding. They said they wouldn't be able to fit us in their budget in such short time and to resume talks post-ESWC. A week or so after ESWC, we came to an agreement that would fare well for both parties. We have faith in Sam and his management crew that they'll do what they can to support us for future events and hope to bring in great results for them. Got to be honest, I don't know a lot about the organisation and I'm certainly therefore not going to cast aspersions on them. But if they were looking to get a good team, I I think they've achieved that. If they were looking to get a cheap team that can get to... um, Yeah, they've definitely not pulled that off. Yeah, uh, uh, European events with regularity, they've not pulled that off. Um, The cost in funding a a team from across the water is huge. Uh, Also as well, are are they going to now have to pick up a French team for the French EPS? Or is that 3D Max out of the French scene altogether? Yeah, I would guess so. I mean, I think they've got money. They they didn't... uh... They didn't mess about their old team that they had with shocks and stuff. I think it, it was the team that sort of fucked up and got kicked by the organisation. Uh, so I, 
I think they've got funding. Uh, and if rumours are to be believed, uh, Copenhagen Games should have a fairly hefty prize pot for so, so mm. it could be worth it in the long run for them if they are just sending them to that European event. And I think, I don't know how much it's going to cost to send them to EC Airlines. I can't imagine it would be much at all. So uh, they've made their way there by themselves the last few events. Uh, and that's almost a guarantee, like seven, eight thousand dollars every time they attend if they keep this run of form up. So I don't know, I, I see it as a decent move, but I don't know if there's a long term partnership in there. I think they're going to need something. I'm, I'm not quite sure it's going to work out in its current format. Like I say, I'm just a little bit sceptical about it. I know uh, Darren from uh, um, Fragmasters, Yak, he did have a good look at them as well. So, uh... Yeah, if I'm right, it was either them or the current FM Toxic team that he was going to pack up to send to the event to ESWC. So yeah, I, I, I'm literally not sure uh, about how about that and, and you know the, the way it's worked out. I don't know. I, I guess we'll have to see how it goes. The one thing I can say uh, is it, if they do go to these European events next year, um, that's going to be you know fantastic uh, to get players of that caliber from the North American scene over. Yeah, it adds a bit more glitz and glam to the events as well to have the whole America versus Europe angle. Something yep. we don't get much in source. Okay, right. So we'll have a quick look at the semi-finals uh, for the German EPS. We've had one of them played tonight, and of course the other is going to be uh, played just before um, I series. So uh, we'll look to the one that's been played. Thermal Take lost two nil to Team Alternate, uh, literally just moments ago. Uh, they was lost that online or was it at the end? It was, it, it was online. Uh, they they weren't playing at an Intel Friday night thing. Um, so yeah, Thermal Take uh, with their team of uh, Cyrus Bash, Minute, S Rave, and players like that uh, were beaten by Team Alternate with players like Crystal um, and Rack <laughs> and yeah. Solik. Um, two nil. It was sixteen fourteen on the first map, which uh, close game, and then uh, a somewhat demoralising sixteen two on the second. Um, well, first things first, I mean, what do you make of that, I guess? Uh, no real surprise. I mean, I think Thermotet would have a better chance online because they've got some experienced players in the lineup. Mm. But I would always fancy attacks to beat them. Attacks seem to be riding high at the moment. They might actually be at ICUs, if rumours are to be believed. Well, I, yeah, I've been hearing these rumours. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of it. I did try to independently verify it today, but couldn't. All I managed to get to verify was the fact the Russians can't go. Um, oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, and the uh, Portuguese won't be attending. So um, yeah, uh, but um, just looking at it here, we've got alternate in the final, and then they're going to come up against either MTW or Mouse Sport. So either way, it's going to be a classic encounter with the big German names there. How do we see MTW versus Mouse Sports going? That game due to take place on the uh, 18th. Uh, I think it all depends on how much NTW is practicing. I've got no idea like what their schedule's been like at the moment because obviously a couple of the players are going to be at I series with this mixed team is rolling, I believe it is, or Rasta. Uh, so I don't know how much time they're going to have to practice. Uh, if not, then Mouse Sports should do well. Hmm. Uh, and I might fancy an upset from Mouse Sports who seem to have been playing a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't want to bet against MTW, but they did have that disappointing uh, ESWC. There does seem to be a lot of conflict in the team at the moment, and I know they're not happy with me for pointing that out at ESWC. I mean, former friends. It was there for everyone to see, wasn't it? it was... Well, yeah, I didn't think I was revealing a big secret, but, um, you know, yeah, certainly because I suggested that maybe uh, Creature Humpton's temper could they were being in check. He seemed to take exception to that, which which is disappointing. Uh, Nucky obviously. Kind of proves your point, doesn't it? Well, yeah, N- Nucky um, as well seems to be someone that I, d- I don't know. It's it's just not working at the moment uh, in that particular team. And I think for the next season, we'll, we are likely to see more changes again. Um, if rumours are to be believed, I don't know if Hoss is going to stay on. I think he's going to see out this season. Uh, you know, kind of as just because they. they need him now they've, they've got to stick with him but then i think after that he's going to go back into retirement which is a shame um but yeah I, I guess you're right i i my gut tells me at lan you should still back mtw but um they're feeling so low 
uh, going into. You say that though. I mean, now sports do have rattlesnake and MX, and the two of them are like hugely experienced land players. And you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, exclude two gooks from that. He was yeah, uh, MVP uh, last season, I believe. So, and he played well at uh, at, the, at the land finals. I don't know. It will, it will be a close game. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to watching it. Hopefully, we can from my series and internet isn't too bad. Yeah, well, like you say, for me, it would have been nice if that was the final, because I don't, it sounds dreadful, I probably shouldn't say it, but I just don't want attacks to do very well. I still think the team that they've got are uh, just not, you know, up to the standard I associate with the with the team alternate name. And, um, you know, I'm always going to question their decision to pick up a known cheater and what that says to the community. Yeah. The other thing is, the team that does win between MTW and Mouse Sports, they will just smash all on that land. Well, I, I believe that yeah. as well, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I, I guess you can argue in a way that is the final, because the yeah. winner's going to come from that semi. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so that's the German EPS. Uh, we'll now turn our attention to the, uh, the, the fairer sex. Infused announced that they would be picking up an all-female CSS team to go alongside their new acquisition of uh, CSS with Frizza and company. Uh, what do we make of this? It's a touchy subject, isn't it? Mm. It seems to be uh, creating some discussion. Uh, I think it's tough for female players. It's like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they're getting segregated by male players just for being female. And then on the other hand, when they decide to make an all-female team, they're abused for making an all-female team. Uh I don't think they're good enough to do anything at any LAN or anything like that. And I think Infuse should come out and say that and just say that as a PR stunt. Call a spade a spade and be done with it rather than try and defend it with some ridiculous claims that they've been together a long time and they've got potential because, to be honest, they really don't as a team. Uh, right. Well, I, my take on it is that, I, look, at the end of the day, I don't think they should be getting as much flack as they are because they're not going to be playing in any exclusive female leagues. No, they will be competing against the males. Yeah. Which, the only problem I've got with female gaming, as I've always said, I'm happy to support uh, f- females in gaming, but not necessarily female gaming because I think they are two distinct things. And if uh, if they're going to go to uh, tournaments such as I series and compete against the men, then why not? But on the other hand, it is unfair that they have been given a chance to join a, a prestigious or a relatively prestigious organisation. They've been given land support when. Yeah, but this, this isn't it, in place. This isn't in place of a male team. Yeah, I guess. You know, they are still supporting a male team. Mm-hmm. The argument seems to me a bit. Specious, because you know, if you were to take what, what if you should pick up another male team, and then what do you call them? You, you, it, it doesn't seem logical to me to the, the criticism. Like I say, if this was at the expense of a, a male team, I'd understand it. Even though, you know, I'd understand the criticism. Even though Infuse, I can understand them being tempted to do that because every time they've picked up a team of males, it's you know, recent times at least, it's backfired it. fucking spectacularly. Uh, you know, if it was if if they were going to special tournaments where it was just hey, it's a gaming tournament, wink, wink. But what it, it really is is here's some hot pants, here's some tight t-shirts, sell our products while a bunch of socially inept nerds dribble over you because for whatever reason they find girl gamers more attractive than just porn stars or whatever the fuck. Uh, then I'd understand the criticism. But for me, it's just infuse saying. We're going to support ma- a male and a female team in this game. And we're not even going to have them segregated. So what's the problem with that? I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see a problem. And I, I've been critical of female gaming. Yeah, it's a fair point. But I still, if you look at it in terms of scale, I don't think they'll do anything when it comes to that. Oh, no. Look, they got getting smashed in the group stages all over them. I mean, of course they are. I mean, if they win a game, it's likely to be an achievement. <laughs> You know, no, seriously, well, you know, you've got to call it as it is. I mean, look, I, I'm not even going to sit here and pretend that I've ever watched them play or I know how good they are. But I know that when when there, there was actually a female team in, in Reason that could play a bit and they will beat some uh, players in the group stages, but they still didn't get out of groups, I don't think. 
No, they didn't. I don't think. That was on McKay, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, a, and a few other names that we, we never talk about uh, for obvious reasons. So, yeah. So, that seems to be pretty much all of uh, all of it in CSS. Um, thoughts looking ahead to iSeries because after this segment airs, we're going to go straight into all the interviews. So, I'm asking everybody else the questions. So, I may as well ask you the questions. Who do you see okay. finishing top three? Ah... Uh... The uh, very games that Seacrest are a given, and then it's going to be between FM Toxic, E Sahara, and As Rolling, the mm-hmm. mixed team. Uh, I'm kind of hoping As Rolling do it because uh, I don't know, I like them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, I think E Sahara should edge it. Uh, do, you, do you think that? I mean, honestly, because uh, you're not saying that in a bid to be diplomatic, because E Sahara, of course, haven't really been practicing still. Yeah, no, uh, they did do terribly in that the online qualifier. Uh, but again, it's just it's about line experience, and they've got some players on their team who really can't play. Uh, Release is like one of the best players the UK has produced in a few years, and they've also got Haas as well, uh, and Stinger. Not, uh, not forget him. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. they've, they've definitely got it in them to to get a top three finish. Uh, it's just whether they capitulate when they start struggling against teams like Toxic. Because I think the Eagles might get a bit of a check, and if things go wrong against one of the smaller teams, then it could go very wrong. Right, well, thanks for your thoughts as always. I'll let you get back to doing whatever you're doing, not playing CSS. Freezing uh, the balls off. Do you, want to, uh, do, do you want to announce officially your retirement from the game? Yeah, I'm out, guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the statement? Yeah, that's it. No more being B-bombs, eighth player. It's over. It's over the Dream's dream. Over. Over. Well, you've always got Dota 2 to concentrate on. I'm sure you're going to have... Uh... Horns better. Well, I'm looking forward to reading more that on article. That yeah, I was going to say more on that later. Maybe if we survive iSeries. But um, I shall see you in the corridors, chum. I will catch right. you later. Peace. StarCraft 2 so joining me for the StarCraft 2 News Roundup is our uh, latest addition to the staff. It's Graham Big Lighthouse Kirkup. It's uh, a fantastic name, Big Lighthouse. I, I won't ask how you came up with it. It sounds a little bit creepy, actually, the more I think about it. But uh, we won't get into that. Um, certainly you are our resident StarCraft 2 expert, along with um, Jeff, Kim and Jonas. So thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Not that you could have said no to me, because technically I'm your boss. So first story in the world of StarCraft was Windy joining Check 6. Um, what do we think about this? Uh, a lot of people seem to think it's uh, a good move for both parties. Well, I think they'd probably be right in saying it's a good move for both parties because Windy, previously known as Major, previously known as Princess, previously known as, well, so many names under the sun. <laughs> He's a fantastic talent. He's just very socially retarded. And that's made him do a lot of foolish things in the past, which is Could you uh, made him... elaborate uh, on, on, on that? Um... Um, he was, uh, there was a, a C event um, on the, the C server, mm-hmm. uh, and it was for specifically players who lived in the C region, and he was uh, using a fake account to play in the event, and he's done a lot of shady things along those lines, which has kind of given him a bad reputation even though he's renowned as a, a pretty good player. But recently he's been in South Korea with uh, the TSL team, mm-hmm. who seem to have kind of knocked him into shape a little bit, and he's taking it a lot more seriously. And I think his skill level is going to rise, and also I think his maturity is probably going to rise as a result of that. So I think it probably is a good pickup for both teams. Uh, it, it seems interesting, because uh, one thing I have noticed about the StarCraft 2 scene, and, and indeed the StarCraft scene, mud really sticks. Like, if you do anything that's considered slightly unprofessional or slightly controversial, it does seem to dog you, uh, for, you know, for the rest of your playing days. Um, and we, we've seen uh, players that, for me, don't actually seem to have too bad uh, traits be really lambasted not just by fellow players but by the community um do you think uh windy you know maybe some of it's a little bit exaggerated about how he is i think it's probably exaggerated because uh yeah i think the starcraft 2 community has so many people in it who are perhaps a little bit younger than they need to be kind of they they seek the drama now and it's so involved with um talking about things and 
everyone just likes to get into all the things and be shocked and enjoy the nitty gritty. And I think that's partly happened with this guy. A lot of it's been brought up from a few years ago when he was playing Brood War, which for the Western scene, you couldn't really call professional at all. Yeah. So I think it's, he's probably developed past what a lot of people want to give him. But I do think he's brought a lot of things on himself. Okay, well, no sympathy for the devil. Right, we'll take a look at some of the events that have been going on. Uh, you lovingly covered the battle in Berlin for us. I'm guessing you had time to watch some of the games while you were doing that. Uh, were you surprised Stefano didn't win it? I wouldn't say surprised because it was a very strong lineup, but he was certainly the favourite going into it. I was surprised he didn't make the final. I mean, he's um, he's such a wild character, Stefano. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't get the chance to interview him uh, out in uh, ESWC, but we we did hang around for a little bit in the press area and we did exchange a few uh, a few words. He was telling me that he's absolutely adamant. He's he's still going to stick to his plan of just playing professional StarCraft two until his studies begin, and then he's gonna he's gonna quit no matter you know win lose no matter what's on the table. He's he's out to focus on his um career, but uh, he seems to really. Have have come almost from nowhere, and he's he's winning all these tournaments, and he looked incredible uh, at ESWC. Um, certainly, I think he's one of the few Europeans that uh, you know you could send over to Korea now, and he would be extremely co- competitive still. But um, I, I don't know. I, I was surprised not to see him win this. I know you're saying you're not surprised. I was surprised. I think he's been in a good run of form, and to only get third to fourth, uh, I, he's going to be disappointed with that, surely. I think he will be disappointed, but that's because he's a really competitive player. And I think that's partly where a lot of his success has come from. He's very mentally motivated and he does think of himself as the best player going into events, I think. Mm. I don't think he's really concerned with the competition, like what they're doing, because he knows what he's doing. I think he'd have at least expected second place looking at his side of the bracket because he went out to Goody, who... Is, I mean, it's kind of cruel to say he's a he's a joke within the community because he's a good player, but his style is so it's it's stuck in its ways, and he's an incredibly slow player, and I don't think anyone would ever give him the edge over Stefano. Yeah, well, but, what did he, what did he do right then? Because you know, here he was, he was a last minute stand in for the event. Um, he then goes on to beat the favourite uh, to make it to the uh, final. Um, what what did he do differently this time? Did he do anything differently? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you, actually. That was one of the few games that I was out for. But I, I would guess that he knows his style because he's been playing it for so long. And I think that would perhaps, along with Stefano maybe underrating him, mm. would go in his favour. Um, what about uh, the, the eventual winner, Nurcio? I mean, he's going to be uh, ecstatic, uh, you know, uh, the young Polish guy. I mean, I, I thought, uh, again, when I was looking at the list of names there, I didn't I didn't place him top three. Is that my ignorance? No, that, I, I hate to say this about you, given that you're my boss now, but no, Nurcio is a fantastic player. Um, I don't think him winning is a shock, and it, it shouldn't be to anyone, because for the last... Two or three months now, if you look at online, which I know is it's a completely different ball game to mm. LAN events, he has been consistently the best player online for perhaps the last three months in terms of consistency and winning small cups and things. And I think it, it was only a matter of time before we had a breakout event. Um, I think at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, which was in September or, or something like that, he did really well in the group stage. He knocked out um, Hook and I can't remember who else. I think he was in a group with Moonglade as well. Mm. And he got through that group undefeated. So I, I, he got knocked out in the bracket straight after, but I think it's easy to look at that one game and think, oh, Nurture, terrible. But no, that was just a one-off, I think. I think he's got a big future. All right, well, um, the final thing I'll ask about the Battle, of Berlin, Battle in Berlin, I should say, not Battle of Berlin, uh, especially this close to Remembrance Sunday, should probably make sure I get that correct. Uh, we've uh, got to talk a little bit about Grubby. I thought maybe SWC was going to be his time. He's been away. He's been practicing. He's been 
uh, really trying hard to replicate some of his uh, uh, brilliance in, in Warcraft uh, 3, in Starcraft 2. And he was looking impressive uh, at ESWC. I was surprised he didn't place a little higher. Um, and I guess I'm a little bit surprised as well uh, in the Battle of Berlin. I may be showing some ignorance about Nurcio, but again, when I was looking at this tournament, I did have Grubby uh, certainly in, in uh, well, you know, third and fourth, absolute minimum. So for him to finish fifth to eighth, uh, why was that, do you think? Well, firstly, he got stuck with Stefano in the first round, which is absolutely brutal for him. Because, mm. I mean, uh, I, the games he played were really, really impressive. I mean, in the interview after the matches, he said it himself that he got a really good start in both games, faltered a bit, and then was always trying to cling on to the game, which he did better than I've seen anyone try and cling to a game in a long time. Mm. But he looked devastated after those matches. I don't know if you saw any of the content but he just I think he was really hoping for this to be his tournament as well I think if you put him against someone else in the first round then he's definitely third fourth yeah well do you yeah, think yeah. um he's gonna take this hard then I mean uh, is, are we gonna see him maybe considering you know whether he wants to put he's put in some superhuman efforts recently and to get nothing out of it i i, I don't know that, that must really make you consider whether it's worth it or not whether it's going to happen i guess that's true but i think he, he still has quite a supportive fan base mm. and i think i think he knows himself that he's improving because you could see that from his games uh -huh. um and there's still a few more events left for like this season if you want to call it that because there's always a little lull over Christmas but I don't know if he can I think he's going to be a dream hack if he can place okay-ish at dream hack and do well against some of the Korean players that might be a little inspiration for him to carry on but I don't know I never considered Grubby quitting but now that you've brought it up that would be sad yeah, I, I don't know. Look, I, I, I'm speculating wildly. I'd, I'd never make any uh, claims to understand uh, StarCraft 2, perhaps as uh, well as m many of the other people out there, like my colleague, like you know, Slasher and, and, and people like that, and even people like DJ Wheat, who I know who uh, has, has made again, you know, superhuman efforts of, of his own to kind of catch up and start learning about the meta game. I, I don't know. I, I feel for me to turn around and do that would be perhaps a little bit fake because I am an FPS guy and, 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 a, and a console fighting guy actually which is where I started so I, you know I don't want to make it look like I'm just going over to Starcraft 2 for the meal ticket but I do try and follow it um, but yeah I, I, I couldn't claim to have any insight about it I just know esports and I know when any competitor works so hard and puts in so much of their time to get such a poor return that your natural inclination is to think is it worth it and uh, for Grubby I don't know. He's never quite scaled the heights in StarCraft 2. And when he announced way back when, when the, you know, he was going to come over to the game, I honestly thought if any uh, esports performer from a Warcraft uh, 3 uh, or any, anything like that, w that was going to do well, it would have been him. Yeah, because he, he has quite an illustrious career, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's like I say, well, one of the greatest, uh, I would say, all-rounder all esports competitors in Europe. You know, just hugely successful and as close to a household name as you're going to get, I would say. So I was really excited, but uh, it just hasn't happened for him in StarCraft 2. Well, I, actually, I've, I've just put up a page looking at his earnings for this past year for StarCraft 2, and to be fair to him, he's managed to make $13,000, so... Yeah, it's 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 not bad. It's not bad. He's, he's had a he's had he came fourth at ESWC, didn't he? Mm, yeah. Appar apparently in Copenhagen Games, which was uh, in the earlier half of this year, he came third as well, and he had a second in um, the IES F mm. World Champion. I mean, that wasn't a big event, but I guess it's still something to go on. Yeah, it's a podium, isn't it? I mean, you, yeah, you take them, take them where you can get them, I guess. But, uh, but I won't, I won't uh, dwell too much on Grubby. I'll, I'll get on to the next story. That's what you're here for. Um, again, an, another one of yours, actually. Uh, Sweet dreams for Dignitas. That was an excellent headline. Well done. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, of course, it's about them adding uh, the player. Uh, I won't even try and pronounce his name, so I'll just embarrass uh, myself. But uh, Dream to the roster. Um, what do you make of this move, then? And what do you think of the Team Dignitas roster in general? Well, I've literally never heard of this player before. Hmm. Um so I can't comment on how it is with Dignitas, but it seems to be in line with picking up um, guys who were studying in the UK who play StarCraft. Because mm. um, they had some guy 
Tandang Ho as well. Yeah, that's correct. A similar kind of studying in the UK, pick him up, he's playing StarCraft. I Do guess you I'm... think cur- that's a little bit cynical? It might be cynical, but I mean, I, I guess it's good for the players because they need someone to support them. And it's good for Dignitas because they get some good players, probably. I'll wait to see how he does at um, I-44 this weekend. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I I don't have that much to say about it, really. Okay, well, that's that's perfectly fine. That's uh, you're the expert. If you think that's a bit of a non-story, that's cool. We can move on. Let's uh, talk about uh, um, soccer to Slayers. Uh, the Slayers roster now, Team Slayers. It's I, I didn't actually realise first of all how many players they had uh, until I saw it, and then just how many sort of top players uh, they've got. Where do you? Um, place uh you know slayers ven I, I i should say um in this and what do you think he brings to the slayers team well i think what uh most fans of starcraft do know is that slayers is an extremely terran heavy side at the minute mm-hmm. they have a lot of like standout players but by and large they're terrans mm. and i think what slayers have been looking for with their last few acquisitions they had Coca about a month ago, I think, mm. and now um, Sokka, who's a Protoss player. I think they're looking to kind of branch out and get a bit more practice and have a few more, like, uh, widely ranging things going on so that they can keep up and have good strategies against the other races as well, which I think it's a good idea for them to pick up Sokka because he'll be dropping Warcraft 3 now, I think. Mm. And he's playing, well, he has been playing remarkably well for someone doing two games at a serious level so I can imagine his potential now that he's full time would be pretty high What do you uh, th- think his performance will be like uh, in the next Code A uh, tournament which is w- where he's going to be um, competing first for uh, Team Slayers do you think he's going to be one to watch? Uh, I think give him two tournaments until he's someone to watch I think he might just be cannon fodder next time around Okay, but I mean, I mean he, he's always looked a little bit shaky when he was playing under We Made Fox, but then he must be doing something right to get through to Code A in itself. So I think the skills there, I think it just needs a bit more time to refine. Okay, next story then. Uh, and I know I know you've uh, got an opinion on this one. Uh, the GCPL2, uh, that's the Gosu Coaching Premier League, uh, their final standings came in. Empire uh, won it. Uh, Evil Genius is in second, Mouse Sports in third. Um I was surprised this didn't get a lot of attention and there was some, you know, uh, good, good teams there. What, what was that about? I, I honestly don't know why this didn't get more attention, actually. Um, I think it might have been overshadowed for the group stages because there was the Evil Genius Masters Cup, which mm. is another team league, which was going on at the same time and is probably slightly better produced. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, this, this event had some really strong teams in it and People have been crying out for more team leagues in StarCraft 2, so I, I think it should have been watched a lot more than it was. And yeah, again, well, as you say, it's incredibly surprising to me that Empire came out first, given yeah, the team that, that, show. Yeah, that, that was uh, the, the next point I was going to make. Uh, how, how have, Again, how have they managed to do that? Because in terms of upsets, while perhaps the tournament wasn't the most talked about, um, perhaps while it's not going to make it into the annals of StarCraft 2 history as, uh, you know, one of the biggest upsets. But nobody had them pinned to finish first. No, I think part of me wants to be cynical again and say perhaps one of the things they really have going for them is that their roster is always at full strength when they play. In the finals against Evil Geniuses, a lot of people were kind of uneasy with the team that Evil Genius sent out I mean, obviously they can only do the best with the players that have available at, at the time, but sending out in control, who's just gone zero and seven in the North American Star League, yeah. and um, Axlav, who although he's improving, he's still not really a top tier player. It just seems like giving away two free sets when it's the best of five. Mm. So I, that would have something to do with it. But then in the game against Mouse Sports, Mouse Sports didn't pull any punches, so you can't discredit them entirely. 
No, definitely not. And, you know, you look at the teams they've finished above, you know, you've got EG there. Um, EG, like you say, again, to bring Slasher into it, he, he's always describing them as the Yankees of, of uh, eSports. You know, he, he uh, um, certainly has a lot of time for them. Mouse Sports, I know the, the management team over there for the StarCraft 2, and they put together a good side, Team Liquid. That goes without saying. And then, you know, if you look in the 5th to 8th bracket, you've got the likes of Fnatic, who, you know, I, I'd say they don't have a comprehensive squad by any means, but certainly it's uh, it's got some talent in there. Team Dignitas, we've talked about them. Complexity. So for Empire to kind of be ahead of all of those, it just seems to me wild. It, it, it really does. I, I can't express how, how and again I, I think if the tournament had received more attention people would certainly be talking a lot more about that result and what it means yeah but to give empire some credit i think this also goes to say that there's been a few team leagues that haven't been talked about enough because in the evil geniuses masters cup there was a there was a playoffs with a lower bracket and they went um they went down to mouse in the first round of it but um then they went through, they beat Evil Geniuses, they beat Fnatic, and then only just lost to Mouse Sports in the final of that, so they came second. And then earlier this month, there was the finals for, uh, it was like a Eastern European Team League one, and they uh, came second in that as well. And there's some, there's some strong Eastern European players, so they've been quietly taken down a lot of big games. Mm. Uh, I think people need to kind of wake up and smell the coffee. They're, they're a good side. Okay, well, that's uh, that, that's where we're going to end it on that one. And final story, uh, just for the StarCraft 2 section of the news. Uh, obviously, it's Coca and no GSL code S. Uh, <laughs> do you want to talk us through this? Because it seems a bit of a farce. <sighs> Coca's an idiot. He's just an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Oh, come on! Um, okay, well, tell tell the story in your own words and and sum it up as. Um... Oh, okay, so, uh, Coca and Bjorn. Uh, I'll start with how the tournament. There's a there's a weekly online cup, the ESV Korean Weekly. The winner of it um, gets a free code A spot, which is highly sought after. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyone can enter. You don't have to be not in the GSL to enter. So. Bjorn and Coco are two teammates. Coco already has code S. He doesn't need to win the match as it is, whereas his teammate Bjorn and his code B. Bjorn is down by about 100 supply and realizes he's going to be knocked out of the tournament. So they basically have that little conversation along the lines of, fuck, 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 I'm going to lose. Coco, can you quit, please? Coco says, oh, okay, I'll surrender. We'll go to the next map. Coco leaves. Bjorn advances, and then you realise that they've just done it in front of about 5,000 spectators watching the game. It, it just wasn't a well thought out. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, have it arranged before you play. Why, you would, you, why would you use in-game chat to do it? I don't, I don't understand. He, could have just, he probably could have just nudged him and said, can you take, can you, can you take a dive in this game? It, oh, it's stupid. I mean, but I think no, no, go on. Well, no. What what's going to happen to Coco now? Because obviously, there's going to be some form of punishment has to be meted out. And let's not forget any form of uh, kind of match. It's, I guess you have to say match fixing. It's never it's never going to go over well. Now we're still not ready for that climate where even these things can be done for pure reasons, for the right reasons, whatever you want to say. And it might be a lovely gesture for a teammate, but ultimately it's it's never going to fly well with, with people. So what what do you think is going to be the consequences for this? Honestly, I, I'm not sure, but I don't think Coco should have taken it upon himself to 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 remove himself from Code S. So I think that's just made things worse. Because mm. uh, I know that I can see where he's coming from by remo- like saying, oh, I'm not, I'm not in Code S anymore. Uh, uh, he's been removed from the Slayer's house as well. Yeah. But I think it, it would, it's even more wrong for him to leave Code S because that's kind of messed up the GSL now. And he was a real contender this season, at least to get out of his group now with uh, MVP in it. So I don't know. I think he's just he just made things worse. Mm. 
Well, I'll, I'll give you what Jeff said about it. Jeff, again, he couldn't appear on the uh, the, the podcast tonight, but he did uh, he did have a few words to, to say about it, and I'm sure Jeff will pop along soon. But he said um, that he thought GOM took the right action, but uh, the event, you know, these kind of happenings, uh, they're not very new, and it doesn't actually deserve the attention it's getting. Uh, do you think it's a bit of a storm in a teacup? No, I, I don't think it is a storm in a teacup. I think... I think that these kind of things probably do happen a lot, but I think they're the kind of things that probably need to be kept undercover. Mm. And I think as soon as you let the cat out of the bag, then it's then it really is actually a big deal. Because, I mean, a, a lot of what's good for the viewers with watching any kind of competitive event is that you think it's it's fair and even and you don't know who's going to win. And if people suddenly start having these doubts more and more confirmed, then you're kind of underpinning, well, not underpinning, uh, undercutting mm. everything about the spectator experience. Okay. Well, uh, Graham, it's been a pleasure to get you on the podcast for the uh, the first time. I think you've handled yourself admirably, and we will certainly get you back on in future. And uh, for all the listeners out there, of course, that is Big Lighthouse on the website. You can read his news and articles there. And what I would recommend uh, for you, young man, while you go away, is do check out our uh, we, we've got an Indian correspondent now. I bet you didn't know this. We've got an Indian correspondent uh, called Suramitro Basu. He's just wrote an article about StarCraft Two in India and how it perhaps differs from other scenes. So hopefully you'll uh, give that a read and give us your thoughts next time around. Cool. All right. Well, th- thanks a lot. And now we move on to the next segment of Newswatch. The interviews. Okay, so I'm here with sometimes friend, sometimes enemy, always entertaining in his views. Uh, it's Luke Critical Green from Link Gaming. You're not actually going to be attending the I series, uh, which I think's odd because you are the reigning epic uh, champions. Why aren't you going to be going to I44? We made a, a, a pretty big decision after Epic Land that we weren't going to go to I series. It was mainly, well, there's two reasons really. Uh, the first being the fact that Mini couldn't go because he booked a ticket to see Red Hot Chili Peppers or something like that. <laughs> right. So, so, that was, so that was a bit annoying, but he booked it like ages ago and he, there was no way he could have dodged it or anything like that. And the second reason was mainly to, to save the money for yeah. for basically next year and, and hopefully we can go to a European event next year, start of next year, looking at Copenhagen Games. Okay, well, um, I guess it's kind of going to be a, a, bit, a bit strange uh, without you there because I would say... Um, as things stand, you probably are one of the better, you know, arguably the best. I'm sure there's people that would disagree with that. Um, UK team at the moment, and certainly you're in form. You've beaten some of the bigger names, such as, for example, uh, the Dice's Rolling Mix that you uh, overcame at Epic Land. Uh, where do you see yourself as as a team uh, in the landscape? I think we're sort of like looking at it as a team who is just about to break through on the European scene. We, we've had some good results and some bad results online with, with European teams, but it's more to like build upon. And now we're really focusing on just having a really good year next year and uh, having a good time over Christmas with the EPL. Okay, right. So this is what I've really uh, got you on for, and that's to talk about other people's teams, because I think you're at your best when you're uh, you're throwing shit at other people. You're always very humble and uh, respectful about your own achievements. But um, yeah, okay. Well, the first the, we got the top two seeds, I would say, um, which is going to be very games. Obviously, number one, and then I would say CK Ras second place, uh, yeah. which is uh, effectively a, a replay of the ESWC final uh, with those top two seeds there. Do you see both of those teams being in the final here? Yeah, I, to be honest, I can't see any team beating either of them, to be honest. Looking at the uh, the, the uh, people going, I just can't see any of the teams causing an upset to either of them two teams. Well, uh, did you follow ESWC closely? Did you get to watch a lot of the games? Yeah, I was actually surprised at CK Rass. When I first watched them play, I think it was against Fragmasters in the first game on Dust 2. And mm. I, I sat there thinking, Jesus Christ, these guys have done it again. They've managed to do all this stuff online and then come here. And they just didn't look up to 
up to standard. They, I mean, I, I don't know what happened in that game. Like, mm. I don't know why I thought that they looked bad. Maybe it's just me being ignorant. But <laughs> maybe, or maybe not. <laughs> I mean, I just, they did say before they went there that they'd um, they played your team, and uh, as we've seen a few times with some of your younger members, they're uh, a bit disparaging about online players and uh you know they said that link gaming gave them a pretty hard time when they played against to them. be honest it was probably me i, I can't <laughs> stand. it's it, in fact i know it was me because i was the one who raged them no. most most games because i just don't understand how you can watch once as many times as you want on lat and he is not as good as what he plays online and there's certain things i watched him play at stair on stairs like in that fragmasters game on dust 2 mm. and he got blind and he just didn't know what to do and that instantly like triggers something in my brain to think, well, when we play him, we throw 20 flashes at him. We, we literally realised he was at long, so we literally sat there and threw 20 flashes out long, ran out, and he just killed four of us, and there was nothing we could do. And I, there's just, I just couldn't explain it, and I just went mad and quit the server there and then <laughs> online. But it, it, it definitely changes. I don't care what anyone says. It definitely changes big time. But it's still, still good enough to give the likes of very games a go. Yeah, I mean, I think they're a team that even when they play on LAN, they just go into it with confidence, and you can mm. see that in the way that they play. They don't really have that many slow tactics, which is good to see. I think it makes it look better from a spectator point of view. Yeah. It's the same with very games. They're both very alike, the way that they both play. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, they're just it's just confidence with them both, I think, with very games and CKRS. The way that they play, they're so confident in their ability. And well... Too strong. The next team, and I'm not sure I uh, agree with this. I don't know, really. Um, it's, it's a bit of a lottery. Uh, East Sahara uh, are going to be going there as well. I think they're going to um, pick up a, a decent seeding. Um, and certainly, you know, I know they uh, had a bit of a tough time in the online qualifiers. Um, I can't remember which team it was that beat them. Was it those Brussels Guardians? Uh, Dex, maybe? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, thanks, yes. Um, so yeah, so they they didn't win the qualifiers, which I think again was surprising. Um, and now they're going to be going to this event. Do, do, where do you see them? Because I know you've got friends on that team and perhaps uh, some enemies as well yourself. So how how do you see them doing? To be honest, I don't know how much they've been playing. I saw them on the server on I think it was Sunday. Who they were going through some tactics on Dust Two, mm. which probably isn't the best of things to be doing four days before an event because Dust Two is usually one of the first maps you start practicing. Yeah, but. If, that, if they're going through tactics on Dust 2, and like we did in Epsilon, we went through Dust 2 and Inferno thinking, yeah, we'll be all right with them two maps. As long as we get them two down, we'll be all right. Mm. And then we ended up playing Train four times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it, might, it might backfire massively with them, and I'm sure that they won't like the fact that I'm saying don't pick Dust 2 or Inferno against them, but that's the way it is. That's, that's the trap that we fell into, and I'm sure if anyone plays them on something like Train, they're going to have a bit of an advantage over them if they've played it for a while. In terms of individual talent, do you think they've still got the potential to kind of mix it up? And I, I think your perspective on it would be interesting because you're in a team that's got where they've got, I would say not through having perhaps the, the largest array of, of natural talent, but you know through hard work and dedication and teamwork and... Uh, you know, you've got young players that are listening to experienced voices and taking on board the lessons, much like we saw with you and and Dan release, um, you know, in previous teams. Um, do you think that maybe they're going to struggle? Because the best days, I would say, for a lot of the players are behind them. And the only way they're going to get back to where they were is by putting in lots of hours, which they haven't been doing. To be honest, I, I think it all comes down to who is the leader in that team and who is going to take charge. Because the way I see it is when you build a team nowadays, if you have, I don't know, three people who will listen to you, to the leader, and then two people who will sort of argue with the leader, that isn't necessarily a good thing. There's good things that come out of having discussions and stuff and making sure. But it, if someone's, if the leader's saying one thing and someone's completely contradicting what they're saying, mm. no matter how good or bad you are individually, it's going to make you look like you're not a team. It's going to make you act as though you're not a team and I don't know when it was in Epsilon we had I said this in the interview before we had two styles of play we had the Birmingham Salvo sort of run and just kill everyone sort of tactics and the reason sit back and don't do anything until they make the first move tactics and it just completely clashed yeah. massively clashed and I, I to be honest I think that won't happen with Isahara I think they'll be all right in on that front but 
I just don't think they put enough hours in to compete with the big boys. And I, I honestly think they could they could go there and get really embarrassed if they get a bad map. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know, maybe play train three or four times or something like that, like what happened to us at Epsilon. It, it might just take it out of you after playing something that you don't want to be playing the whole time. Yeah. Well, you know, I still think they've got some great players there. I think um, Stinger, obviously, is the uh, phenomenal talent. I think Eric uh, has is probably is one of the best all-rounders to uh, to have ever played the game. Um, do you think that... I mean, the, one of their arguments was... Uh, we've got LAN experience and that's why we should be at events like ESWC because we'll do better than the teams that work hard and earn it online like the DS Racks and, and people like that. I mean, do you think that what's going to happen is they're just going to go into LAN mode and, and p- that, that's basically the difference between them and then, say, a team such as Code Red Gaming who are doing really well but still lack that LAN experience? Um, I, I actually completely disagree with the fact that this LAN experience. If, it, okay. if that was the case, then I'd be the best player in the world. But <laughs> I don't know. It, you can look at it and be confident in that way, and that will help you. But to be honest, the game's evolved massively, and I think teams are starting to. There's a lot more teams now starting to take advantage of the fact that they can just put the time in and be that good. Because it, that's what it comes down to: is how many hours can you put in? And you're not going to compete with a team who can put six, seven hours in every night and it just doesn't happen it doesn't it doesn't matter how good you are i mean we beat the east sahara team online and I, to be honest i don't see how that would have changed in any way on land we would have played exactly the same way as we did on 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 on, on land as we did online and we we do play exactly the same no one does anything out of the ordinary mm. on online but when when we went to that first epic land you could see the individual ability because that's all it went it was down to in that first epic land we had some things that happened which were just insane. And, and obviously, if you get pushed into a corner, you, you need players to come out big and do those sort of things, like the triple kill that Bash did or the, yeah. the five-man that, that Batham did. But to be honest, at the last Epic Land, we, we didn't need to do anything special and we didn't need to do anything crazy. So it will come down to their individual ability. But whether their individual ability is there still, I have no idea. I know Stinger is, is, is known to come out and do things like that. But to be honest, at the last I series, he he didn't stand out. I don't think he was a standout player in our team, and I don't think that you can win it on your own anymore. Yeah, it, it is all about getting those one or two frags in the beginning of the round, and 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 then like surviving basically, and then basically doing what a team should do. And I just can't see any individual being that good anymore. I just it, it's taking out of the game. Massively. Well, a point that was probably proven by the nature in which you overcame the dice's rolling mix, which is the next team I sort of want to have a little look at. I'll be honest, I was looking at that and I just thought that team, that blend of players that have all played together in different lineups, the the, the G team of Henry and Hoods um, together again, go into an event and there's Link Gaming who, you know, they're good. They, they work hard, but they just don't have the same levels of talent, I, I thought. And uh, personally, I saw Dice's rolling were going to just win that event. And you overcame them, I would say, relatively easily. Uh, were you surprised uh, how easy the game was? And what do you see as the particular weaknesses within that mix of players? I think we were surprised how easy the whole land was. I mean, to be honest, we went into that event with not that much stuff with Pez just joining and stuff like that. Mm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was surprised at how easy the whole event was. Uh, we thought we'd have a lot more grueling games, but the four maps that we had got locked down. We absolutely dominated everyone on, to be honest. The only game being the exception is Inferno against CRG Gaming in the groups, but we're in a completely different mindset there. Um, for this event, for our series, I think that they will do well. I think they'll be better than I Sahara. I actually, I actually think that they're the team who, out of those five players, have got the more hours. They've probably played together a bit more with the previous lands and stuff like that. Um, they play together on a daily basis and gathers and mixes and stuff like that. So I think that in that team, at least they have quite a bit of chemistry. Um, I think with the East Sahara, they are starting from scratch and I think that they don't really have that much uh, to, 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 uh, to really rival the attitude of, mm. of Dice's rolling team. And I think when it comes down to it, it will, it will be a grudge match. And I think with the passion and stuff like that from, from people like Huds and Weber, mm. especially, and even Mole, actually. I think Mole shows a lot of passion in the games as well. Mm. We'll, we'll carry them through. Okay. Um, I want to ask you uh, about your old uh, home as well, Fragmaster's Toxic. 
what do you make of this Scottish Swedish mix of players? I actually think they'll be the surprise of the event. I actually think that if anyone's going to compete with anyone, it's going to be them. I think that they now have a bit of experience behind them. Um, they're, they're still practicing a hell of a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually asked them to come on uh, to, to this podcast, and it's the second time when they've said uh, we don't want it to interfere with our practice. So they, they're actually kind of shying away from even like a you know ten minute conversation at the moment. They're practicing that much. Okay, that's a bit extreme, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you, I mean, I wasn't that impressed with them at ESWC though. Uh, yeah, but I think they they probably practiced a bit too much in that in that respect. Not. They practiced in, in a silly way, whereas they just drilled it into players how to play. Mm. And you could see that they were just so static in the way that they were playing. They didn't know how to adapt. Hopefully, they've sat there and watched the ESWC and they've watched the final and stuff. and They've learned how to play and mm. learned how to adapt rather than just getting some good tactics and playing and hoping they win. Because anyone can do that. And it is, it is a matter of adaption. And that's what I think I'm good at is, is in the game, we adapt quite quickly what other teams are doing because we don't have that much we just adapt to how the other teams are doing i think that they need to take maybe a leaf out of our book and look at and look at how to adapt to what other teams are doing rather than just playing their game they're not good enough to play that just their game and go in and win an event they need to learn how to adapt Mm. well uh just before we start looking at the bargain basement i will uh, mention code red gaming the uk code red gaming team uh, that's the former um, um twisted play roster uh, that they've done really well and because i don't like a lot of them as people i'm kind of loath to say it but uh they have actually done really well for themselves and are winning you know a respectable amount of games putting in good land performances um do you know much about the team and uh, how do you see them doing yeah i actually quite i look i look let me speak today i actually know them quite well like um i speak to ben quite Mm. quite a lot um He's usually at work when I'm at work, so we usually talk quite a lot. Uh, and I think that this is a tough one because I actually quite like some of them and, and I think that they, they should be better than what they are, actually, because they put so much time and effort in. Uh, but again, I think they, they lack a real big leader. I, I think Chanboy calls for them. Mm-hmm. I think that that's the way that they work, but he doesn't even sit in the middle at the events and stuff like this. And I just yeah. think that they need a bit of a, a bigger leader in that team to then carry them through. I would have but, thought if you make Chamboy the caller, you take away... I mean, what made people sit up and take uh, pay attention to him was his fragging ability anyway. And, I, you know, you know how hard it is to frag and, and to call. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. And orping and orping, yeah. calling and fragging is, is something that I just shy away from because yeah. it's just too much, too many big roles. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, who would, who would you suggest then as a potential leader within that team? Not Bowser, surely. No, I don't think... I don't... To be honest, I don't know why Bowser's in the team still. I think they should get rid of him, but um, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. I don't I don't think he brings to them anything but positive. To be honest, he's he's an idiot for a start. Uh, he's not that good, especially on LAN. Um, and to be honest, I think he's bringing the whole team down. I actually think the same probably for Red Snake. I don't uh, positive wise, he's probably got a better attitude and he's probably a better person to have on land with mm. to land with in the team but he really brings nothing that big to the to the table um the other three players are, are, are top guys and i think that they deserve better to be honest uh, there was a moment that was quite infamous within our team that we, we when we went to the first epic land uh, red snake was playing on the public server under the name red and uh, I made a comment. I said, "Hope I didn't know who he was." And I said, "I hope this guy's in our group stages because he looks total crap." And from that <laughs> minute onwards, we just sort of thought that was a bit of a joke, and and, and uh, we ended up playing them. And then I realised who it was. And uh, but yeah, it's, it, I just don't I don't rate him, and I don't think he's very good, and I don't rate Bowser anymore. I I, I always had Chris in the team because yeah, I, I was going to say good. you used to play with him quite a bit, so it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's, a it's a turnaround, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we had we had him in the team and we thought he was a good fragger and then we took him to land and he had the one game against Four Kings on the Intel Friday night yeah. thing. And he was really good that game. We watched the demo back and it really wasn't that <laughs> impressive. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, with Chris, I mean, Solf came out and said this, this comment when we were deciding whether we should keep him in the team or not. And he just said, he's just not cool, dude. And that was it. <laughs> and that was it for us, to be honest. That was, that was the end of it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, well, we're gonna. I'm sure you're gonna have some opinions about these lots uh, that I'm coming to, um, but we'll just get. We'll go through them fairly quickly. Um, just sum them up in your own words. How you think they'll do? Antwerp aces. No. <laughs> That's it. Just no. Yeah. No. B- Belgians at land, right? Yeah. Then, no. Okay. No. Right. Infused. Uh, they've got the, the team with the. Uh, uh, Rimmer, Anvil, Anvil head, <laughs> the human Anvil. <laughs> uh, Frizz is back, um, but you know I'm looking at that team and I, I don't know what to make of it because Ryan's brother, uh, Kemry, um, he was good. I thought he stood out in some of the teams he was in. Fuds, a surprisingly good player for a drunken Swedish I've, I've guy. I've heard a lot about that Fuds guy as yeah. like some, some sort of aim god, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see with them. With I, I, I know they put it in quite a few hours in preparation wise and they look to be taking it quite seriously so um yeah i don't nah i don't i think it'll be a, like a, a battle between them and crg gaming for like fifth or something okay visualize your enmity yeah, i mean i i, I <laughs> what has happened to shaney's career he was in dignitas and now he's playing with hendo yeah, but to be honest, <laughs> what has happened was the dignitas call up a <laughs> like a a good thing <laughs> no, probably not. But, paying, um, paying for a slug? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, your friend Odie. Yeah, no. No, so no. No, don't see them being a surprise package. Uh, the Russians, Team Austral.ru, which is, uh, you know, Limper, Com, Alone, those old school players. Um, I believe Neff is going to be in the team, which is, you know, sometimes they've been a bit standoff ish yeah, with that, each other. That guy's a bit of an idiot, to be honest, a bit of a, a, bit of a rapist. A, rape, a rapist gamer I mean he messaged me like every day for like a year asking if he could get in uh, FM Toxic <laughs> I think he's a bit of a weirdo but yeah I'd, I'd, to be honest I can't I, I don't know with them actually I, they could turn up and do like the old Russian sort of turn up to a LAN and, and just rape everyone sort of mm. sort of thing they, Russians have a have a way of doing that with Virtus Pro did it and they did it at ESWC and they just came out of nowhere and I don't know whether that mentality goes through the whole of Russia, but Russians seem to have a good team in every single game every so often. Mm. And maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the one. We'll see with them. I, I, I personally don't reckon they'll do very well because I don't like them. A Nexus eSports, the finish. Yeah, they they could be a surprise with them, to be honest. I, I always blame them online because I think <laughs> that they've got some players who are just unbelievably good online. But... When whenever I speak to other people and and they seem to think that they're not very good on land, so um, people more informed than I am on how their land performances go anyway seem mm-hmm. to think that they're not very good. But yeah, I, with that, I think that those two, the Russian team and the Finnish team, they they could it will either go one way or another with with them against people like CRG Gaming. People like CRG Gaming will either fear them and they'll lose, or CRG Gaming will just go in there and absolutely dominate them. And and then the Finnish team will look stupid, or the yeah. Russian team will look stupid. But to be honest, I don't know. It, it all depends on whether how good their setups are, how what PCs they get, stuff like this. Because when you come all the way from Finland or or Russia, you never really know. I don't know how good the rental PCs are, what monitors they're going to have. Mm. And I, I that is one of the main things that that I've seen the change when I got this bit of advertisement here, but. Bank monitor. When I got the bank monitor, I, I just couldn't believe how much easier the game became, and that is that is honest truth. I've been playing on the 75 hertz monitor since 2006, uh-huh. and the change was just insane. And and that is a massive change. When I whenever I've been to lands now, I just think, wow, it's, it, I can kill people. Whereas before, when I was playing 75 hertz, it was a struggle. I used to grip my teeth to kill people, and that's just the way it was on my phone. Okay, uh, and then uh, just a couple more. Real bargain basement we're reaching into now. We've got Eggsto. I don't know if you know any of those guys. Uh, it's pretty Ruse. Much, uh, it used to be. I don't think he's going to be there. It's, it's basically, I, I can't believe they're actually going to attend LAN because at least four out of five <laughs> of them are cheaters. You've got Cyber, Console, Scion, Hans, and Poiser. Um, so, Cyber? Cyber? Yeah. Why do I know that name? Uh, he's got big eyebrows? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> it's actually just an eyebrow. I should, I should, I should. To be honest, it. after after about twelve, does it does it really matter? Well, I don't know. You you tell me. You're you're, you're the experienced chap. Uh, uh, you know, are these people? Uh, is anyone from that group ever likely to burst through? I don't know. Is, is the is the Pulse Ruse team going? Is that is that a team? I don't know. Yeah, is it's. There a I I don't know. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen them confirmed yet. Because everyone keeps raving about them, saying that they're the new up-and-coming team, but they mm. just never seem to do anything. But 
I don't know. But yeah, if there's nothing to do with them, then no. What do I don't you, know them. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about uh, Firmworm then, finally? Have you ever heard of these guys? It's um, Sean and Skiddy from the old Dignitas. Skiddy, Dignitas, yeah, I know yeah. Skiddy. And uh, Kodak, who I used to play with uh, all the way back. He's a, he's a 1.6 lap moved over. and I, I think he's a, a really good player that no one ever talks about. Like, really good aim. He's got zero in his name, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's the one, yeah. No. <laughs> he's not having it. He's not having it because he's got a number in his name. Look, <laughs> that in 1.6, man. But the only one who I think is good with a number in his name is Release. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was that was a bit of a throwback, wasn't it? Like him yeah, doing... I know. It took me a while to get, get used to that one. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Right, well, look, Luke. It's been entertaining. It's been fun. Uh, so, final thoughts. Very Games are going to win it, yeah? Yeah. They'll, they'll 16-5 the final. No, no, actually, I reckon 16-7. 16-7 well, that's good news. But like I said, thanks a lot for taking the time to come on. Um, we're going to move on to some other people now uh, with, with no doubt equally uh, shocking opinions. But um, enjoy following the event from home. And uh, with, with any luck, uh, I might be getting you on for the uh, the after the after the event podcast as well. So you can see, yeah, see how right your uh, predictions were. So thanks a lot. Yeah, I'll catch up with you soon. Yep, see you later. Bye. The Interviews. Okay, so next on the show, it's the podcast regular. It's George Hoods G. Hoskins from MTW. But MTW won't be attending this I-Series, of course. He'll be playing with the mixed team, Dice is Rolling. So, George, uh, first things first, let's talk about MTW. How's that going for you? Yeah, it's going really good, actually, at the moment. Uh, apart from ESWC, obviously. Uh, we were disappointed about that, but we got uh, still in the EPS season. And then we're in the Liga Pacal final. So if we win on Friday versus Mouse, we go to EPS finals as well. So it's going good. Well, the reason it was my first question was because when I saw you at ESWC, you looked pretty dejected, downbeat. You were talking about reassessing your career, you know, hints at retirement. Uh, have you had time to put that performance in perspective now? Uh, yeah, I think it just, uh, as I said at the event, and as everyone agreed, it just it just wasn't working. Uh, I'm not really sure the reasons why I was <clears throat> I assessed myself afterwards and like I'm gonna continue um, for as long as I can I think uh, mm-hmm. but yeah I mean I don't think it was anything individual it's just just one of those things where the f- five together just we just didn't click or something I, I don't know it was just a very weird event for us but so uh, what's what's the long-term plans then uh, I'm not too sure really. I think uh, we got the end of the EPS season mm-hmm. and then the Liga Pacal final. So they're both on the same. And then after that, I've, I've honestly no idea. Um, hopefully I can keep continue playing. Um, and I'm not sure. We're unsure if like, as Nicky mentioned at ESWC, I'm not sure really if Ollie's going to continue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think really everyone's just after EPS or after like, yeah, basically after EPS, everyone's just going to sit down and see where they want to go with everything. So you've got the Intel Friday night game. I mean, it's a bit of a packed schedule for you because you play the Intel Friday night game, which, of course, is a crucial game. We're in the knockout stages now in German EPS. You've got to win that, obviously, uh, and then get on board uh, a plane and kind of fly direct to, to Telford. Uh, so how's that, how's that all working? That must be, like, uh, pretty sick, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. No, it's fun. I mean, because we managed to win the tickets, we are able to play just on the Saturday. Mm-hmm. Or as far as I understand, so we need to get there before 3 p.m. GMT, which is not too bad because our flight uh, up and back from Munich's early morning ones. So yeah, it won't be too bad. We might be a bit tired, but it's all good fun and it's a chance to play with some old friends and stuff. So okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the the team that you're in, the the Dice is Rolling team. I was hugely surprised that you didn't win epic land i still can't believe it i was talking to critical earlier in the show he was saying he was surprised at how easy it was uh so what went wrong i you know on paper that team should have won shouldn't it uh, well i me personally wasn't in the team then but um i don't know what happened for them really because i was at boot camp for swc but uh i think um they just 
<laughs> they had the similar problem as we had at ESWC, I think. Uh, just the five people just didn't click on the day. And mm. yeah, they, they came up against a well prepared and good link team who really wanted to win. So, because uh, we won the, I think it's Epic Six, but we won. And then, yeah, so obviously Link wanted to, they deserved to win really because they were the team. What about uh, you know some of the individuals that are in this team now? I mean, you know, you feeling much better about this lineup? So again, correct me if I'm wrong. It's going to be Jacob, Mole, Weber, you, and Henry. Is is that correct? Yeah, it I should mean, be that. Do Do you think that team could actually, you know, upset uh, some of the teams that are going to be there and maybe make it to the final against Very Games? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we've played with versions of the mix before. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did well at I-40. We got to the final there. And I'm happy to hook up back with Henry. And then obviously my teammate Weber. So we got we got the ability to get there for sure. And it'll be a bit of fun. There won't be really any pressure on us. It'll mm-hmm. just be some fun. Get to chill with the boys and see what we can do. But I think, yeah, we can do really well. I won't talk too much about Very Games because we spend every podcast doing that. We get it. Mm-hmm. They're, they're fucking <laughs> awesome. Um, CK Ras. Uh, they're probably the team that I think a lot of people think are going to be playing Ferry Games in the final. Uh, what what can you tell us about them as uh, someone who's had to play against them? Um, <laughs> they, they're just a great team. I mean, they've got Fetish, which is like, in my opinion, the reason, part of the reason they do so well. Because, like I said, I've played with them on numerous occasions and said on numerous occasions, I think he's probably one of the, if not the best caller, in game leader around. Um, and yeah, obviously they got once. So they're they're on good form. I'm not sure how much they've been practicing actually, because uh, I think a few of them have had jobs and stuff like job commitments since CSWC. But I think they're the most, apart from Very Games, they're the other second best team in Europe and the most practiced at the moment. And like everyone always says, you know, Danes online and all that stuff. But every big event so far they've attended, they've they've managed to do well. Mm. I think maybe bar one, which is like 30p. So, yeah, they've just got consistency on their side as well. So, uh, What do you make of the Isahara team? I know this is going to be a bit of a strange one for you because I'm guessing you've got friends on that team, people like, you know, Stinger and and, yeah. and so on, and Release, who you played in the UK side with. Uh, you've also got people that are less complimentary about you, uh, mm-hmm. whose names I'm sure we can hazard a guess at. Uh, what do you think they're going to do? Um... <laughs> probably play us on Inferno, I guess, in the lower bracket. I mean, I don't know. it always seems the case. Um, I, I, it's no no bones. I don't like certain people in that team because of the way they act, and it's I think it's bad. Um, but <clears throat> they're all good in, individuals. They got like, you know, I played with ENC with Husey, and I think he's a really good player, and Stinger deserves to do well. So I mean. They've got those two guys there, and if they're well practiced, they can do well. And obviously, Dan, I played with in power, so yeah. I don't really know too much about Haz, and well, I know you're rich, but I don't really know too much about Haz. I haven't really played with him, but um, yeah, I think it's for them, it's time to actually prove that they are as good as they say instead of just talking about how good they are. Well, one of the things that surprised me was, uh, you know, th- this team's talked about they wanted the summer off and then they wanted to practice. Then, of course, we had the ESWC incident with them. And, you know, since then, you know, they've said some things. I just think, God, you can't you can't really believe that. For example, I was talking to Dan, and I'll be honest, I, I think he took a dislike to me. We don't seem to talk as much as we used to. Um, and he was saying that he felt, you know, his team could, could beat Berry Game 16-0. I mean, I I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of that. Is that you can't? I, they they I can't know. really think that, can they? No, I, I think, I think like uh, they are very good and they're confident people. But like you said, they need to less talk and more play and mm. show that they are as good as people know they can be. Like for example, Husey when he plays and Stinger are both exceptional players. But they got to make it work together. Uh, I series and that will be their proving ground really is I series because they they need to they have I think they've been practicing as far as I know but as far as being very game 16 nil uh <laughs> everyone I mean I've said I'll beat very games and I've got like eight rounds off them and I think everyone who's come no one's really come close to them in two years yeah. and 
going back to my iSeries interview, I showed you the, I told you the reasons why no one's got close to them. Yeah. And until a team does that, then no one will get close to them. Not in this game. And I think it might be come to the end of this game. So. Interesting. You know, well, we'll have a catch and... I, I won't pick your brains about that because that's another show entirely. Um, and I'm sure I'll get you back for that uh, as one of the chosen Seattle uh, kids. Uh, I, but let's talk about some of the teams that are in that mid-tier bracket. Uh, a lot of uh, respect is going the way of Code Red Gaming. I would say respect in terms of their ability to play rather than the way they conduct themselves. Um, what do you make of them? Um, I don't really know too much. It's, that's the team with Pritchin, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I get along quite well with Pritch because I've known him because of obviously I, I've played with Wilsu and teams. Yeah, I heard, heard a rumour he's related to Wilsu. <laughs> yeah. That, that was a shock to people. I think they're, uh, yeah, they got good aimers and stuff and they're younger people and uh, they can do well. I, I don't really know too much about them, but I think as long as they don't let the hype surround them, they'll, they'll do all right. I mean, Pritch has come along from when I've known him since Power mm. to now. He's actually become quite a good player. So, uh, What about Fragmasters Toxic then? Uh, they've got to have a better eye series than they did uh, an ESWC, surely. Yeah, I mean, I actually get along really well with the Fragmasters boys. I mean, after we were out of ESWC, we went out for a bit and uh, I spoke to, got to know them all and they, they actually work really, really hard. And I think that Yak's finally got himself a side that is putting in the effort and uh, hopefully they can start uh, <laughs> reaping the benefits of that, I think. I mean, they've got good players. They just need to uh, make it work, like I say, as a team, just like every other team. But, um, yeah, I really hope Fragmasters do well. Um, in, the, in the ESWC, call it, uh, in the ESWC, it was like they didn't do bad. It, it was just the groups like we did as well as them. Um, yeah. And that... ESWC is very strange. Even Online Kingdom did very well, and you can't really judge them on that. But um, and then I series qualifier they played with a Merc, and we we played them on Nuke, and yeah, so you can't really kick anything from that. So I think it, they've put in a lot of effort, and they always do, and I think they deserve to do well. I mean, I series uh, is going to be a little less competitive than I thought it was. I want to ask your opinion on this because obviously you, you play in the German league. Mouse sports aren't going, and I never mm. thought I'd see a team with. Sam in it sort of dodge a lamb. Uh, do you have any insight as to what's going on there? Yeah, well, I think what it is is uh, because the reason we can attend is because uh, of our laptops, um, basically. So when I pack to Munich, I'll I'll just put my laptop in my bag and rent a monitor. So I'm my and my my laptops as good as my PC. Whereas for mouse sports, they would have had to have got five PCs to the event, and they don't have the laptops mm. and then the monitors, and then on top with the flight. I mean, it's quite a lot because, like I say, we're flying back to Heathrow and then getting a train. Whereas if we wanted to fly to Telford, there weren't any, any flights coming in, and then then at, on top of that, they need five PCs. So I don't think they're do dodging it. I, they really wanted to go, but I just think it's with the time frame and everything it was just pretty impossible for them to get there but and it's a shame because they would they looked really good in nice series qualifier yeah well online kingdom aren't going as well either which is a really? massive shame i think yeah they, they i was talking to fix uh today uh he might be on the show later i don't know it depends he's got a, a busy schedule as well but uh i was, I was talking to mario and he said uh that yeah they, they can't go uh now so he didn't elaborate on the reasons why but i just thought it was a shame because i was really looking yeah. forward to seeing those at uh, that is a shame, actually. yeah they did <laughs> like and this sounds bad but at ESWC, everyone was like looking at the group and everyone's like oh that's a free win but yeah. i mean now they're they actually did really well and i'm certainly going to be aware of them in future tournaments so that's a shame really because they had especially fix he was very very good versus us so He's such a sick player. Uh, right, okay, so they're the people who aren't going to be there. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing with uh, everyone who comes on the show to talk about their own team's chances and stuff, um, what we're doing is we're making them look at some of the teams in the bargain basement, and hopefully we'll get some of them on over the course of the day. Uh, in view, 7th to 8th, your old mate Frizzer, uh, Fuds in there, Kemri in there, Ryan's uh, little brother. Um, <laughs> that, that team can't do well, can it? Uh... <laughs> I don't know, really. Frizzer, I played him uh, in a few mixes since the updates, and he seems really good. Um, I don't know, it's just mixes. Uh, I've no idea how well they can do. I, I wouldn't imagine so, no. 
Okay. Uh, Antwerp Aces. Belgian people at LAN. How's nope. it going to go? Uh, everyone's just saying one word. No. <laughs> it's going south <laughs> with that one. When I attended FOM and the Belgians were using Van Dijk, so versus, I uh, lost the respect. So south, very south for them. Okay, good stuff. Uh, right, next one. Uh, the Russians. Team Austral. Are I know you know Neff, and obviously you've followed the game a long time, much like myself. So you'll remember guys like Limper, Com, and Alone. Uh, mm. Do you think they could be one of the surprise packages, or do you think, as we saw in the Copenhagen games, that maybe the Russians have kind of had their day a little bit? No, underdogs. Uh, we played them. We played similar to Russians, like Limper and seventy nine, and we thought we were going to win easy, and they smashed us on Inferno. Uh, long time ago, but yeah, they're underdogs. They got weird play style, and no one really plays against them, I guess. So definitely underdogs. And Neff is good. Neff is quite a good author. Yeah, I I think he's a really good player. He seems to have a lot of people that don't have a lot of uh, good things to say about him. Um, I don't no, know why that is. I, I I think he's a nice guy. I think wasn't he at thirty p as well? Yeah, I mean, he just came yeah. to spectate. Yeah, he was a really nice guy. I don't know. I don't know why people say bad stuff. Uh, Limper as well. I, yeah, the boss, guy, absolute so, boss. Yeah, uh, great guy. Definitely underdogs. So, yeah, I hope hope they actually can do well. Finish, uh, a Nexus Esports. D- uh, yeah, definite underdogs. We played them a few times in MTW and uh, in Prax, and uh, they were very, very good. Um, whether we were just having an off day or not, uh, they they know what they're doing and they're well practiced. So if people underestimate them, we'll lose. What about visualize your enmity? Uh, that's got Shaney in. Um, I know you've got some uh, some time for Shaney, but he's he seems to have he, uh, kind of gone a bit south himself. He's playing in a team with Hendo and who Nathan. else is in? It's it's Hendo, Shaney, Crazy Smurf, uh, <laughs> Cookies. So uh, I I don't really know these players, so I can comment. Uh, that's that's not disrespectful to the Shaney or the guys. I, I just generally I've never played them and I. I wouldn't know what to say. There's so equal uh, chances. Equal. There's, there's another Rasta team that's been put together with one of our old colleagues in. Uh, a couple of uh, our old colleagues. Uh, Millen, back from the dead apparently, uh, <laughs> coming to play a source event uh, alongside Zesty. Uh, and the other nice. ones in that lineup are Crazy with the at sign, which I've never liked. Chronic with a one. And uh, RZE, Rise, I imagine that's short for. So, uh, how, uh, could they do anything? Uh, I I get along well with all, all the rest of the guys, uh, Mark and, and those guys, uh, the Millens. I think, uh, yeah, why not? They could do they could do good. You're such a nice guy, George. I'm biased. I'm biased. Yeah, that, that's your problem. You t- <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But, uh, f- final thoughts then. Can see Keras, or I guess perhaps Isahara, or I guess perhaps you. Can anyone beat Very Games? No. Okay, good, nice and quick. No. And what are you guys aiming for? I mean, what's the minimum you're going to come away with and think that was worth all that bullshit flight nonsense that you're having to go through just to get there? Uh, an epic game with ESR with lots of flame, probably. Yeah. And then top three after that, hopefully. Bit of triple overtime. Yep, something <laughs> like that again for the eighth time. All right, oh. bro. Well, look, man, thanks for coming on the show. Always a pleasure. Um, I'm sure you'll... Uh, be talking to us when we get to the event as well i'm, I'm amazed i'm going i, I keep telling myself <laughs> gonna take a break from no the more. series yeah just like no more like i just need to rest but uh now i'm gonna be there so me and mick will be on site look forward to talking to you there yep and you too i'll see you there the interviews Okay, next up, it's Neil from Fragmasters Toxic, who, of course, uh, many of you will remember his beautiful face uh, from ESWC <laughs> when he talked to us last time. How's it going? Yeah, not bad, man. Okay, bad. well, I've got to ask you the uh, the question. Since ESWC, um, I know you guys were a little bit disappointed, even though you could see the positive aspects of your performance out there. Now we've got an eye series. Fragmasters have a very proud tradition uh, in this tournament, uh, you know, Yaks won one as well, which is uh, always good. Um, how have you guys been preparing for this event? 
Um, I'll be honest, we've not had the best preparation like that we wanted to because people have had work and stuff and it's been like two weeks since ASWC. So we've pretty much played like two days and we've got uh, an online qualifier tonight against CRG. So that's pretty much going to be our practice for the event. So we'll have to use it as best as we can. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, coming out of ASWC, I mean, do you, did you think you needed a lot of practice? Do you think you had, like, lots of things you needed to put right? Or do you think that the experience you got at ASWC itself is going to really translate to your performance at I-44? Um, at ASWC, we noticed, like, a lot of problems. Like, a lot of people that were specking us said, like, when we played CCAS at in the first game, we, we should have beaten them. We just made so many mistakes and we know we should have won most of the games. So it's just learning from the mistakes that we made. But being somewhere like that, it's like on the PCs and you can't hear a thing when you're playing. So it's like going from that to like ICs, it's going yeah. to be totally different. So it's a lot easier to handle pressure as well after being at something that big. So you guys are uh, feeling confident or a little bit subdued? How would you uh, sum up the mood in your camp? Um... We're confident, but it's like we haven't prepared as much as we want to, and we haven't really went into an event like when it, like this big without that much preparation. I mean, I-43, a lot of people said we're a mixed team, but PTK came in a month before it or something, and he got us like, super drilled, so we were really confident on like certain maps, which is why we've done so well, because we were just really organised. Um, so we'll obviously have all that stuff that we used at the last event, and everyone's gained a lot of experience from ESWT, but we haven't practiced as much as we wanted to. So we are confident going into it, but it would have been nice to get a little bit more preparation and sort out some of the mistakes from ESWT. OK, well, let's look to other teams now. Uh, opening question I've been asking everybody is, can CKRAS topple very games uh, in, you know, I, I think they will replay the ESWC final at this event. I think both of those teams are the best two going into it. Um, can CKRAS do it um i don't know i was speaking to jihan and um he was saying like seacrass haven't played much at all either because i think colm's been away mm. but um uh very games i know haven't played at all either i think they've had like one week practice so maybe i mean i don't know very games though the thing is like they could have about 15 hours each and when they just get to land they're just going to be that good because they've got so much like they've got such good teamwork i don't think they i don't think they will i think it'll be exactly the same as the swz yeah, I don't think they'll lose it at one. I mean, how much of that controversy about the French outcasters and, and whatnot, is that going to play on everyone's minds? I mean, would you say that's going to affect CKRAS? Are they going to be keen to want to put that right? Because obviously if they lose when there aren't French outcasters, they might look a little bit silly. Uh, do you think the very games are going to kind of redouble their efforts to prove it wasn't just Regnum calling spots, which people said he was when, of course, he wasn't? Um, what do you make of all of that? Yeah, I mean, I was sitting there, like, listening to it, and it was ridiculous. <laughs> like, it was mm. so biased, it was insane. So, obviously, that's going to have, like, an effect on Seacrest. Yeah. So, they'll be confident going into this, but, like, I think we even spoke to you about it, like, existence... When Seacrest, they noticed Seacrest were doing well in the semis and the best of three, they sat behind them and took notes and stuff. So it's like, they're not going to... Very games aren't going to let them get the upper hand, I don't think. I can't see that happen. I don't think it'll affect them at all. Very games will beat them, I think. I think they'll beat everyone. Right, well, Isahara uh, probably is the next ones in line to be considered as having a shot at the title. Uh, What do you make of their team? Um, Well, most of them... They're all right when you speak to them, but when they get in game, they're just knobs. So it's like in, in what they're way? really. It's just their attitude. They think they're better than you before they've even played, and it's like if you're not playing the game their way, then you're wrong. Mm. And it's like they, they don't seem to want to adapt to how newer teams are playing. But it's like when you've got people like Release and Hughesy and Stinger, they're obviously going to be a set when you get to land, no matter how much they play. So I don't know. They could pull it off, but. They haven't practiced at all either, so a lot of teams are going into this event underprepared, so mm. I don't know, I think they could do well. It just depends. I don't think they'll be very games or Seacrass, but they could maybe get third or fourth, I think. Uh, it just kind of following through on that point, uh, you know, you talked about them not sort of adapting uh, to the newer style of play. Do you think that's perhaps part of the reason why they've underachieved 
online. Uh, one of the things they're saying is we'll get to LAN, and we've got so much LAN experience in the team, uh, we'll be fine. Once we get to a LAN, we'll be fine. Um, I'm not so sure I agree with that, uh, although there is a, perhaps an element of truth in what they're saying. Uh, do you think perhaps that you know they're being a bit naive and in thinking that they're just going to turn up to a LAN and everything's going to click? I think I think it will to a certain extent, but they're not going to like. They wouldn't have lost to those Danish teams and stuff they did online, and they would have been infused with Zio and Ziggy and stuff on LAN, I would think. Mm. But they're not going to turn up to LAN and beat very games of 15 hours practice or beat Seacrest, who have just done well at LAN. Mm. And I think they'll even struggle against Hudsey's mix as well, because they're all good individually. So Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of history there as well with uh, between those players. So I, think, I know uh, Huds will really want to win that game. So Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, we were just talking to him, actually. So uh, I, I, think, um, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, one of the things I, I do want to touch about is because I think... Uh, again, not meaning this in a disparaging way. I think as somebody that's kind of come from uh, nowhere, I mean, it doesn't seem like that long ago that you were still in active <laughs> yeah. gaming and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I thought you might have a bit more insight I- into some of the mid-tier teams, if you like. Um, <laughs> for example, the uh, Code Red gaming side, who you've got to play tonight. Um, yeah. What do you make of them? Because I think it's a bit of a shame. I I, I know that they think I, I don't like them. And it's not that I don't like them as a team because they've performed way beyond my expectations and they impress me whenever I watch them. Uh, but equally, there's a few players whose attitude I don't like and I'm a bit old-fashioned and a bit stuffy and I like my competitors to be classy. Um, nothing wrong with a bit of controversy. <laughs> Calling a... a uh, you know, a, a, comp- a fellow competitor by a racist term, that was pretty much the end of it for me. I, I've never really seen that in esports, and I don't like it. So, yeah. uh, what do you make of them as a, a whole? I mean, they do. We played them last night, and they do, They were flaming quite a bit. Like, they don't like Freeburg at all, I think, as an onliner and stuff, so they kind of like made that known. Mm-hmm. And they were flaming quite a bit, but it's like they are by far the best team in the UK just now, in my opinion, that I've played. Yeah. I mean, I haven't really played Link, but when I did the last time, they hadn't played a lot. And obviously, they just changed player, but mm. they do practice a lot. And they are, like, some of the stuff they do is really, really good. And they will be really, I think they'll do really good at this event. Um, We're going to have a tough game against Team Tonight, purely because we haven't really played as much as we wanted. Um, mm. It's going to be really tough, but they are they are really good. And they deserve, they deserve to do well at this event, because they've put in the effort. Yeah, I'd, I'd go along with that. I think it's nice to see teams putting in the effort for uh, for events such as this, and uh, you know, teams like yourself as well. You know, I'd definitely give you guys credit for that. I know in the build-up to ESWC, you guys couldn't even appear on that podcast because you were practicing that hard. So, yeah. you know, I've got, got a lot of uh, respect for people that are willing to put the time in. Um, okay, next team on the list I'll talk to you about, and I'm sure you've got opinions. Antwerp Aces, Belgians. <laughs> I don't think great. I don't think I've been beaten that bad in a practice when I've played against them online. It's like I'm not saying they cheat, but they don't get flashed either, right. and they're just ridiculously good. I mean, every time we kind of avoid playing them now. Actually, they are. We played them on a couple of maps, and they are really, really good. So, I think, I think they even beat Attacks last week on mm. in an official. So, I think they'll do really good if they can pull it off on land. I'm not saying they cheat, but it's down to experience, I suppose. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know a couple of the players in, in that side. And to be honest, I would say they've always had a bit of a aura around them in terms of, you know, are they legitimate players or not? Um, and I think, you know, you come from Belgium, questions are going to be asked immediately, uh, given, given the country's history with some of the teams. I don't, uh, I don't know. I can't see them doing well, and I think they're going to have a pretty big flop. I think if any UK team from the mid-tier is going to leapfrog into that like 7th to 8th bracket and be talking about it until the next I-series, as UK players do, they're the team that's going to drop out and make way for someone to do that. They're going to get caught cold, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, next team, Infused. Infused, um, yeah. I think they'll do well. I think Fods is really good. Uh, Kimry as well. I'm not sure about Pav and Foxy, but well, I was yeah, you've uh... I played with Kimry and Fods before. Yeah, uh, and Fods is really really good, underrated, like really underrated. So if he's on it, he can he can do really well for them. I think. 
Do you feel so, do you feel as if a player like Pav's got something to prove now? Because I know your colleague played uh, MSK Paul played with him uh, yeah. in a mixed team, and um, his his quote was it was like playing with four, which I think was perhaps a bit harsh. But, um, I, 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 you know, I know Pav quite well, um, so it's a, it's a bit strange for me. He's uh, he's he's had some mixed performances at LAN events. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think he wants to prove himself in. It's not the same like going to land with a mix than it is when you're going with a team. I mean, he's going to have a lot more organisation now, so he should he should be able to play as good as he possibly can with that team because mm. they are going to be really organised. But I don't know. I've not really played with him or against him. I didn't really watch him at land that much. So I know Paul said that he was he wasn't as good as he, as he thought he was going to be from playing online with him. But I know Ricky like quite rates him as well. So. I'm not too sure. What does he know? What does what does he know about anything? <laughs> yeah, true. Um, what what was he like? Uh, B bombs eighth player or something? <laughs> you can't you can't <laughs> listen to his experience. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. The Russians, Team Austral. Are uh, All the greats in there alone. Limper and Com, along with uh, Neff um, and Fabi. Do you see them uh, doing anything? Are they are they even are they actually gone? Yeah. I, about, I'm told they are. Oh, okay, so, I, but again, I, I hope so because I've, I've talked about them quite a bit. But um, uh, they, they, I think they were tagged up recently as saying going to I44. You know, I, I would imagine they're still going to be there. I guess if they're not there, no big deal really either way. But uh, if yeah. they, if they do attend, um, would they do well? Um, that's one team I honestly haven't played that much. We're playing them tonight actually in a practice. Um, we played that same team in one of the qualifiers for ESWC, and they weren't that special but I know Neff's really good yeah. um, and Limper was always a standout player as well so I think I don't think they'll do that well to be honest I could see Aces doing a lot better than them if they pull it off interesting um, but yeah and the Finnish and Nexus I'm told they're going to be going mm-hmm. uh, they were do you think they were um, yeah they were really good when we played them a couple of weeks ago uh, that Ston the guy is ridiculous mm. <laughs> he's the fastest offer I've ever seen in my life so if they can if they, I think they'll do. I think they'll do well if they can pull it off. But I know Finnish teams haven't had that much success. I see it, so. Now I know um, you've, uh, you've you've always had a thing or two to say about uh, dodgy players. Uh, <laughs> Eggsto are meant to be resurrecting a lineup and going to I44. Uh, yeah. That team's going to be Cyber Hunt, Poiser, Console, and Scion. What are your thoughts about those guys? Um. That Scion guy is the best player in the world, and so is Poiser, I think. So, I don't know. They done okay at the last I series, I think, but I don't think they played anyone good. Um, online, though, they're definitely. Poiser is really good, and Hans is always pretty decent as well, but I don't know. I really don't know. I wouldn't want to play them at hand, because, you know, if you lost them, you just never ever hear the end oh, of it. Oh, yeah, that, that, that'd be it. <laughs> that, that would be the end of it, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, the end of it for you. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. I'd be amazed if they actually attend. I, I think that's still <laughs> a wild bait because I look, I look at that lineup and I can't think of if you wanted to put the most online UK lineup together, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so, pretty much. you know. So, okay, well, look, final thoughts. Um, because I know you've got practice coming up. Um, what is it uh, that you're aiming for at, at this event? What's the bare minimum you want to bring home for Fragmasters? Um, RC. I think anything below that would be a total disaster, mm-hmm. despite the amount of, prep, the amount of prep, preparation we've had. But we don't see why we can't beat Isahara, um, Dice is rolling as well. Mm-hmm. I think Code Red will probably be the, one of the tougher teams there. Um, and I'd really like a shot at Seacrest again. I think we could do a lot better against them. Um, give them a closer game at least. But third and fourth would be nice. But okay. fifth to sixth bare minimum. Right, bare minimum fifth to six. Right, yeah. well, you heard it here. Thanks for coming on, Neil. I'll let you go and practice, and uh, um, I will speak to you at the event as well, no doubt. The interviews.
Okay, next up on the show, uh, it's someone that I'm sure you'll all be uh, familiar with. It's going to be one of the chaps actually shoutcasting the I-44 event, and it is uh, Seaman Walkout as Henriksen of Rage Fest, the uh, the shoutcasting group. Um, uh, we've not had you on the show before, so uh, thanks very much for coming along. I would have thought we would have uh, done an interview by now because you've been around for a long time. But um, yeah, so uh, how's it been going? The the, the Rage Fest thing. I'm I'm kind of interested because it seems to have come from nowhere. I think everyone agrees that CSS needs some good shoutcasters. So how's it all been working out for you? Well, it's been going uh, very well, uh, actually. Uh, and uh, we did actually come just from nowhere and uh, started uh, uh, just shoutcasting the I-43 uh, tournament from home. Um, it started out quite random as uh, Hellblinder just uh, named his streaming uh, profile uh, Ragefest and he did some uh, solo casting by himself and uh, I stumbled, up, uh, st- stumbled upon it and I started watching him and I was thinking to myself that uh, shoutcasting is something I've always, uh, I've always wanted to get into it uh, after I quit uh, CSS which I did uh, about two years ago now. And uh, so I uh, asked him if uh, I could uh, co-cast with him uh, for the I-43 tournament. And uh, uh, I think it overall it went pretty well. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback from uh, uh, our viewers. Uh, and uh, we just got tons of requests uh, by people who had just been watching our stream. And uh, they just wanted us to keep on doing what we did. And uh, because, uh, as you were saying yourself, uh, Source has a real big lack of mm. uh, com- and I mean shoutcasters these days mm-hmm. and uh, I think with the combined experiences and uh, knowledge uh, both me and Blinda have from the top scene and from the game I think we could uh, actually do quite well uh, we've, uh, we've been contacted by uh, several tournaments uh, both online and offline uh, to do commentaries for them mm-hmm. and uh, obviously now I-44 is the first one that's uh, been uh, well it's out out in the open now that we're going there. Yep. There's also some other stuff coming up. So uh, yeah, we're uh, we're actually just using Ragefest as a temporary name. Uh, we hope to be joining up with uh, some form of uh, established organization as soon as possible. Well, that's uh, that's good, um, and obviously I'm would be happy uh, uh, for you guys. Do you think maybe you'll lose some of the attitude that makes your uh, shout cast a little bit different to the norm? Because I know you and Christopher have got, a, I would say, a distinct style and having played <laughs> together for such a long period of time, you've got quite a good chemistry uh, with each other immediately. Um, if you do go to someone a, a bit more established, would would that be, uh, would you have to kind of sense yourselves a little bit? Um, well, obviously we will have to tone down some <laughs> some of our comments. I mean, uh, we've had some pretty uh, disturbing comments while, uh, when we uh, casted the R43 tournament. Uh, but I don't think it will uh, affect uh, it too much uh, because, I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, we will still be uh, kidding around and uh, having uh, loads of jokes and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it's just uh, the very extreme kinds of comments that we'll have to tone down, uh, uh, obviously, when we get uh, sponsors and such. So, uh, yeah, at uh, I-44, uh, you probably won't be hearing uh, Hellblinder screaming uh, <laughs> homo, gay, rape, uh, uh, stuff like that. I mean, we'll tone it down a bit, but uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a challenge uh, because we're kind of used to being laid back and not having any responsibilities when mm. it comes to acting all professional and stuff. Uh, but I think uh, we'll manage. We get the entire day on Sunday to kind of warm up uh, multiplayer, set up uh, an uh, own room for us with an uh, i7 PC so we can uh, just uh, stream some of the upper bracket games before the finals. And uh, I think that will do. We'll be able to adapt to the, that kind of setting. Good. Um, so, Obviously, uh, you've, you've had a pretty long playing career. Uh, does this new development, the shellcasting, I mean, does it mean that pretty much your playing days are over and you're looking to do other things, or are we still going to see you popping up in teams from time to time? Uh, you won't be seeing me popping up uh, in any teams. Um, I, I, I quit uh, quit CS after LAN 79, uh, and uh, 
then I had about a year break from CS and I started, I, I missed playing CS. I mean, uh, I've been doing it for such a long time. Yeah. So I tried out playing uh, a bit with the Dignitas squad that got sacked. Oh, from, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I enjoyed playing with them, They're very nice people. And I think they, they had the chance to get real good at the game. But uh, it just, uh, I after practicing some, I started feeling... Uh, tired of the game again, and I just realized, that, okay, this uh, I, I should just uh, don't do this anymore. So yeah, I'm not I'm not going back into gaming uh, uh, on the player side. I'm just gonna focus on doing other stuff uh, gaming related. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, I series. I'm hoping you still follow the scene. You know, obviously being a shoutcaster, um, I'm guessing you sort of have to keep following who's doing what um, and it's not too difficult in CSS because obviously it's just all about very games at the moment um, <laughs> the first question I've been asking everyone that's come on the show tonight has been whether or not CK Ras, uh, the Danish side again with your old friend Fetish in there um, you know can they topple very games at i-series uh, yeah of course they can uh, it's pretty much the reason why I wanted to come back to CS is because it seems like even the top level players, I mean, the kind of players who's just as good as Xixens and all of these players, they have just uh, openly on the video interviews on Cadred, they just they said that, no, this is impossible. And I think that is, uh, I, I'm sorry, it's retarded because uh, I mean, very games, so they are, they are so good. I mean, uh, obviously I don't need to explain that, but it it's it just comes down to the reason why they win so much is because they just get every every team flashed out before they push in and i mean obviously the game isn't that unbalanced it, there has to be some form of counter and the, the day people learn how to counter their games they they're going to fall a long way down on the top 10 list mm. uh, it, it, the same thing happened with the fnatic team they were unbeatable yep. uh, but as time progressed, people just found out why they were so good, and suddenly they weren't really considered to be even top five in Europe after people started just bashing them. Yeah, and they even lost to the likes of good-looking gamers and stuff, didn't they, when they came back? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, personally, I I see no reason why Team Very Games shouldn't. I mean, they they don't need to win this event. I mean, we got teams like E Sahara, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. I, group of very skilled players mm -hmm. and uh, as long as uh, those players play their best I mean I even see very games not even they don't even have to lose 14 to 16 I mean uh, Isahara e has the opportunity to beat very games uh, honestly to the ground okay. and obviously Seacrest has as well uh, well uh, I'll, uh, I'll come I'll come at your points on Isahara is it difficult for you to say such positive things uh, for, for, uh, <laughs> for, for that team because of course I know you and Rich uh, don't exactly get along. You've, um, I mean, fa famously, we all remember the See You Rich interview <laughs> after you beat them on the stage in I series. Uh, and he's never had anything good to say about you in terms of your playing ability. Um, so uh, is it difficult for you to say anything good about that group of players? Mm, not exactly. Uh, I mean, I'm a pretty uh, chilled out kind of guy. I, I, I can separate uh, stuff, I mean, personal stuff from... Uh, facts. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think Rich is like one of the best players in Europe, mm. uh, because honestly, he's not. I think everyone would agree with me. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's a reason why he keep pop, uh, popping up in all of these good teams uh, all along. I mean, that's kind of the same story as me. No yeah. one has a lot of good things to say about me. No one understood why I was in a lot of good teams. But I mean, players, they bring stuff to the team that normally i mean not always the spectators can see or people outside the team can see so obviously it's bringing something positive into teams I'm, uh, and uh, he's very good at uh, like building teams and seeing uh, what kind of people is needed to build a solid team um and also has as always uh, i know he doesn't like me uh, so, <laughs> really so I, I didn't i don't know you you and eric don't get along i, I had no idea about that uh, no, uh, I didn't either, uh, but uh, <laughs> it was down to when I played in recent gaming, uh, he got, uh, after what I've heard, he got pretty upset that I got a lot of attention and he thought it was undeserved, mm. and because of that he's just not spoken to me ever. Uh, 
But yeah, whatever. Uh, what about, doesn't really matter. What about your fellow Norwegian uh, stinger then? Uh, he's, in, he's such an insane player. I mean, uh, easily one of the, I would say, six best players uh, in Europe. Uh, and what makes him good uh, in terms of CS and uh, getting to the top is, uh, it's a bit negative maybe and uh, harsh, but I mean, he only, I think he only considers himself. He wants to get uh, to the top and he doesn't care what happens yeah. along the way. And I mean, I don't, I've never really agreed on that kind of state of mind, but I mean, it's working for him and it's working for most of the top players. So, mm. Yeah. Okay, well, the next one is um, Dice is rolling. They're uh, a mixed team, uh, basically comprised of um, part of MTW, uh, Henry G, uh, Mole and Jacob. Um, so it's Weber and Hoods G are the two UK players from uh, MTW that are going to go. Uh, what do you think about their chances? Uh, I mean, Henry G, Weber and Hoods G, uh, insane individual players and... Uh, uh, they got, I mean, such fantastic people in general as well. I think if they just uh, enjoy them themselves and uh, don't put their expectations too high and just play the game uh, for fun, which is pretty much what you do in a mixed team, I think they can actually go pretty far. I mean, they can easily get top three. Uh, I see them. They, I mean, it's possible for them to beat E Sahara. But, I mean, when it comes down to raw team play, I mean, I, it's going to be hard for them to beat uh, Seacrass and Team Vera Games, I think. Uh, also because of, I mean, Jacob and Mole, good players, but, I mean, not at the same level as the uh, other players uh, at the very top. Um, what about, as well, we've got uh, a few kind of teams in the mid-tier. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much you'll know about them, because, um, obviously, with it being a UK event, a lot of them are kind of UK focused for example i don't know if you've seen the new infused lineup uh with frizza and kemry and, and people like that and fuds who's actually a, a swede um yeah. do you know much about them uh, i don't know much about this <clears throat> new team they've got going here but i remember frizza very well uh i don't i'm not sure how i'm going to pronounce kemry yeah, that, that's correct, yeah. Uh, uh, Kemri, yeah, I remember him as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they've been playing the game for quite a long time. And uh, I've always uh, thought of these kind of players as... I mean, they, they, they're just missing one step to get to the very top of UK. And uh, I just uh, think it's... Uh, they've been quite unlucky with teams folding and stuff. I think they can get pretty far in UK. Uh, so uh, I think they can do well. Foxy, I never heard about this player. And uh, Fudsex, uh, good player. I, was, I think, didn't they come third at uh, I-39? Didn't he play in that Bash team or yeah, something? Yeah, he did. He played alongside Bash. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, I think he's a very good player as well. Uh, I, on the same li lines as uh, Frieza and Kemri. Uh, he's just, miss uh, just missing the last step to actually achieve the absolute best in his career. I think he just needs to be, uh, be more lucky with the team he's in. Mm. Um, okay, the other team I want to ask you about uh, is um, the Belgians. Um, we've had a lot of uh, uh, um, negative comments about Antwerp Aces. People don't seem to think they're going to do well at LAN. Um, I'm guessing because you know, you're focusing on your commentating now, you won't have played them. Uh, do you know anything about the, the Belgian team? Uh, I've got to be honest, man. I don't really know a lot about these people. I'm uh, looking at their lineup now, and I can't. I might remember Revo, mm -hmm. um, but no, especially. No, I'm not. I don't think I, I remember him as being uh, one of the sickest players I've ever uh, faced off against. But I mean, it's LAN, everything can happen. And uh, judging from what you just said, that people think they will do bad at LAN. Uh, there's always the possibility of these players actually being pretty damn good and people just think they cheat because they're uh, and they, uh, unknown names for a lot of people. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, do you, what about the Finns, uh, Anexis? This might be a little bit closer to, uh, to home for you. Um, do, do, <laughs> do, you know, uh, do you know anything about those guys? Because a lot of people are saying they're playing really well at the moment online, um, but uh, they're not too sure how they're going to do at LAN. Uh, well, it's the same kind of story all over again with most of the, I mean, there's been so many teams that people say, ah, oh, they're going to fail so hard at LAN, and then they actually get to the LAN and 
they play insane. I mean, if you remember Guardian and the bandwagon everyone jumped on, that he was cheating, clearly. Mm. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't know a lot about these players. I remember Falsu. Uh, and I think I remember uh, Hiku. Uh, but I haven't seen much of the other players. Uh, they might be newcomers. And uh, as you already know, I kind of quit gaming one and a half years ago. So uh, I don't know. I don't got. I don't have any big expectations for them really. But I hope they do well, uh, considering they're flying over from Finland and uh, actually not being a very well-established team yet. So I uh, I honestly enjoy when uh, foreign teams get to these kinds of events and uh, they understand that they actually need LAN experience to go the next steps to become yeah top of their game. All right. So. Let's have a look in the bargain basement now. Um, I've been doing this for everyone, so I've got to do it for you. I'm guessing <laughs> if you don't have uh, any particularly strong uh, strong feelings about it. Um, that's uh, ent- entirely uh, okay. But um, I don't know if you know about... Um, we've got uh, a few teams like Exto. Have you ever heard of them? They're the onliners, the likes of Cyber, Console, Scion. You ever heard of these people? No, I, honestly, I haven't. Okay. Uh, are they are, are they new? I mean, no, no, no. They've been around for a while. It's just they they generally try not to attend lands because, well, you know, for, oh. obvi- for obvious reasons. Interesting. So, <laughs> yeah, they're they're one of those teams. Um, well, okay. Uh, oh. it's, it's just interesting to see them actually attending a land, and so I'll try to keep an extra eye out for how they. Yeah, do. if you get a chance to shoutcast one of their games, I, I I recommend it. That's if they turn up. It's not guaranteed they're going to. So, um, then uh, there's a new Rasta team uh, which has got Millen in. You, you'll remember yeah. Millen from Infused, um, and it's Millen, Zesty, Crazy, uh, Chronic, and uh, Rise. Um, I don't know if uh, you ever played against Millen when he was active and considered a young and upcoming talent in the scene. Yeah, I remember Millen. I always thought he were, uh, had loads of talent and he played uh, extremely well whenever I attended iSeries and we played him. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I have nothing but good things to say about that player. Uh, I seem to remember Zesty and Crazy as well, but I, I, I don't understand why I remember them. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember if they were very good at their game or if I just remember playing them a lot. Hmm. Well, I'm sure you know you, you come across all these people all the time, don't you? Um, yeah. I'm hearing rumours that the Russians may or may not be going, and that's like again people that I'm sure you'll definitely know, like Limper, Alone, Com, Fabian Neff. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to fact check it while I'm recording the podcast uh, because they're on the list as it stands, but I'm not too sure if they're actually going to go or not. Now, a few people are saying that they don't think they are, but uh, if the Russians go, do you think they could be a surprise package? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, if I could pick from, uh, uh, this might sound harsh, from the low uh, tire of teams here, uh, at least from, I'm looking at uh, some unofficial seed for, for the top 16. Mm-hmm. And uh, I honestly seeing uh, this team, if they do attend to be kind of the black horses of the tournament, I mean, they have the chance to do well. I mean, they've been playing Source for longer than I have. And uh, I remember them to always be at the, I mean, top 15 of Europe, uh, but never really done attended events Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken but I mean I remember all of these names and I've played them loads online and uh, never thought any of them cheated or anything but they always played close games so uh, that would be very interesting to see them attending and final one that I think we'll uh, we'll take a look at I've completely went past them and skipped over them Uh, Fragmasters Toxic uh, again, got some Swedes in there uh, and some Scots, which is like the maddest mix of, of nations. <laughs> uh, I, I, li- I say it every time. I just do not understand how they communicate because the Scottish accent so hard to understand. Swedish, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, do, do you think the likes of, um, you know, Freiburg, RDL, P- uh, PTK, do you think that those um, guys are going to have a good event? Because at ESWC, there was a few people saying that they, uh, they underperformed. Uh, uh... From my point of view, I don't see them underperforming at all. Uh, I, I look at the lineup and I see just I see five uh, well, I mean, good players, but I don't see any names that could, I mean, carry them. I mean, they don't have a stinger in their team. They don't have an uh, NBK in their team. They're just a solid lineup with uh, yeah, good people, but they uh, I don't see them having any, uh, I mean, sick individual player who can uh, save. Uh, uh, weird rounds and uh, make them go far in the tournament right so final thoughts uh ultimately 
you can't see anyone other than Bury Games winning, or can you? I mean, being realistic, I know you said at the beginning teams need to be positive, and the the, the question as I see it is, everyone seems to have been so underprepared coming into it, how do you kind of get the advantage over a team that just win and, and are always so prepared and always so well drilled? I hate to say it, but I just see them taking another easy, uh, you know, an easy competition. Well, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I understand why you say that. Mm. And uh, probably they just will take it easily uh, without even dropping one game. Mm. Uh, but I mean, obviously the, the to beat them, I mean, uh, it's just down to pre- preparing for the event properly and uh, studying the way uh, Team Rare Games play. I, I obviously understand that they do change setups and strats, but I mean, you can learn a lot from how individual players play uh, independent of the strats they're following. So uh, obviously that's the, that's the A4 kind of answer to that. But I mean, it, it just, as always in games like this, it, comes down to the day, uh, the form of each team. And uh, I mean, with the raw skill of E-Sahara and uh, uh, well-drilled and uh, obviously some sick players in it as well, Seacrest, mm. uh, I, I don't see it as impossible at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be mildly shocked if uh, someone else won this LAN. Uh, I'm hoping that someone else wins, but I mean, very games they win because they are prepared and they deserve it. So. Mm. Okay, well, um, I guess you're going to be looking forward to uh, casting the games. Uh, we'll be certain to ensure that we've got all of the uh, Ragefest stuff uh, embedded uh, on our site and uh, putting links up and making sure people know uh, what you're doing because obviously we do want you guys to succeed because uh, Source needs uh, talented shoutcasters. So all the best with that and hopefully if uh, you do get picked up by this uh, mysterious organisation that you're talking about, you'll uh, come back and have a chat to us about it all in the future yeah no problem thanks for having me uh, it's a real pleasure look forward to seeing you in Telford yeah cool right. the talking point Okay, well, we interrupt uh, tonight's bulletin, not to tell you that a president has been assassinated, sadly, uh, or uh, the UFO invasion is happening, also sadly, but rather just to clear up a few things about some of the teams that are going, we've got some last minute I-44 news coming in. Now, I'm sure most of you already knew that the Portuguese, who were very impressive at ESWC, they're not going to be able to attend um, anymore, and they did send us a statement to read out on air just to explain a little bit why they were going Uh, and this is from Fix he said it's like I told you before we won't be able to go because we have one player Budge that can't go and we refuse to play with a ringer or anything like that we did really want to go and hopefully next I series will be an option but for now all our fans will next see us at XL party between the 16th and 18th of December so that's online kingdoms uh, situation Quite surprisingly, um, what seems to have happened literally while I've been recording the podcast, uh, it's come to light that the Russians, uh, formerly of Austral.ru, have decided not to go, uh, and it's and they've and actually the team has disintegrated. It's split apart, and, and here's why. I was talking to Neth. Uh, he said that uh, that the organisation actually did want to send them to I44. But the players, Neff and uh, a couple of others, didn't feel that Alone and Limper were up to standard. And they didn't want to go all that way from Russia to get beaten by some average UK team in the group. That's Neff's words there. So we said to the organisation, we want to replace those two or we're going to leave. And uh, they ended up leaving. So there is no Austral.ru. So the first half of this podcast where we've been asking about how well they're going to do, could they be dark horses... All at this stage, largely irrelevant. They're now no longer going to be attending. And Neff and uh, a few of his friends have now returned to the Pincho banner. Hopefully more on that later in the show. Uh, which, as I've said, it's effectively being recorded live. But um, if uh, we can't get him on tonight, we certainly will get him on in the future. The Interviews
Okay, uh, the next person on the show, uh, we're, we're actually scraping the bargain basement now, it's uh, Sam Millen Millen, who's going to be representing the new Rasta team, which is Rasta SOQBN, which I've just been told stands for should have quit by now. Um, that might be true, actually. I thought you had, Sam. What are you doing back playing the game? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, lands all right, but yeah. Well, when, we were, when we were last talking, uh, when it was me, you, and uh, Diablo yeah. uh, from COD4 pretty much just sat wondering where our lives went wrong <laughs> collectively, you were saying you're going to go away, focus on Dota 2, uh, focus on some you know big esports titles, and certainly CSS wasn't one of the ones you were uh, too interested in. So what's really what's prompted you to come back and have another event? Honestly, like... My team knows this full well. It's purely just the fact that Dota 2 isn't out yet. Mm. Um, and CSS is the only sort of thing, you know, going at this land, really. There's no other big game at all, really, is there? Um, I'm so, guessing not a StarCraft 2 person, then. No, not a StarCraft 2 person. Nah, I'm a team, team game person, yeah. which is the reason for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I, I'll ask you as well about uh, your team's chances. I was looking at the lineup. Obviously, I remember Zesty. I've seen Crazy. He's come in for some uh, praise uh, of late. I'm not too familiar with Chronic, and I think Rise is it R Z E? Uh, R Z E. Yeah. Uh, also known as Cracker. Um, <laughs> <Great. laughs> uh, <laughs> basically, R Z E. Mark. Uh, I've known him for a couple of years now. He's he was a, a COD Four player. Ah, right. Um, in, 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 like really good one. You know, originally in the Reason Gaming. That oh, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, won a couple of lands actually. Uh, but he's been playing Source just sort of, you know, on and on and off casually and just in Rasta really for a couple of years. But yeah, he's solid. Uh, Chronic's a new addition to myself. You know, I, we were just sort of like, who the who the hell are we going to get for a fifth? Mm-hmm. You know, last minute sort of thing. So we threw up a couple of names, you know, Crazy recommended Chronic, said he'd played solid at some, some lands and whatnot. Got him on, sound bloke and, you know, good player. So just went along with him. So, uh, I mean, looking at the, the team as it is, uh, you know, you've, you, you represent them raster and stuff. Do, do you guys expect to get uh, a high a high finish? I see some people are see, you know saying you should be seeded in the 13th to 16th bracket. Do you, do you feel well, what, that? What do you call a high finish? Um, uh, it's a good question. I like I, I, it's tough with an I series because it, it varies based on competitiveness. So uh, sometimes 9th to 12th is respectable, and other times if you're finishing that bracket, you may as well be the like the next Avash, you know, it's it, it's an achievement without actually being an achievement. So um, I don't know. I would say for you guys, ninth to twelfth would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd I'd be very happy with ninth to twelfth. I think you know we've we've only been playing a week or so together. Um, you know, so we, we know we're not exactly for practice. We're just relying on sort of you know being able to play the game. Um, Seventh to eighth would be like uh, op- op- extremely optimistic, and would just I'll rely say. purely on luck. <laughs> we'd just rely like on luck, you know. The game's going incredibly well. That's the only way that that would ever be possible. And I have to twelve, you know, I'd be I'd be extremely happy with. How how's your uh, ability these days? Because you know it, it does seem a long time ago <laughs> when when you know me and you yeah. were both in infused, and you were the young talent, uh, you know, kind of getting uh, attention and and also getting backstabbed by some of your teammates uh do you feel that you're, you're still capable of performing or is this just a bit of a bit of a laugh for you um i mean I, i'd say it's it's more for the fun of it first and foremost you know as corny as many times you've probably heard people say that sort of thing yeah, um just a few down the years <laughs> but um yeah still got the competitive streak i, I like you know i'm still decent at the game i mean it's like i'm still struggling with these new recoil patterns and whatnot it just seems stupid to me the guns just seem a bit random now whereas there was actually some kind of thing you could get used to with recoil before on the ak and m4 but you know whatever you live with it you you know all you got to do is just one bullet to the head so i just been trying to force myself to spray less i suppose uh-huh. um but yeah, I mean, I, I I do find that I tend to play far far better on maps. Uh, to me, like train. The, the reason I find for that is that there's sort of more tactical advantage. You can use your head a yeah. hell of a lot more on maps like that. Whereas on Dust Two Inferno, you know, it, there's a corner 
and it's who's going to shoot each other first around the corner. That's that's effectively the map. That's, yeah. that's as far as it goes. And at that, then I usually lose out to the younger ones who are faster, the ones who've got ridiculous aim because they've been on deathmatch 12 hours a day for the past week. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I mean, that's why I tend to fall down, I think. But we've got people like Chronic and Crazy on our team who seem to just be ridiculous with aim and stuff. So, you know, it all bounces out. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the other teams that are down in your bracket. I know you probably don't know a lot of them, and I, I hate to put you on the spot. But, uh, you know, are there any teams that we should make, you know, that you, you guys have been playing that maybe we should think about? For example, uh, you know, uh, visualize your enmity with, with the likes of Hendo and Shane. Honestly, not really been playing versus any of them. We've been getting games out of S.PCW. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> is that extensive so our practice yeah, the bad ass dot piece yeah. that brings like yeah. horrific nightmares 2005 playing yeah, Polish for <laughs> 3 in the morning man fuck yeah. that I mean we've moved on from skill.pcw s.pcw is apparently the new one I don't know is it, is it on skill no excellent can't believe people <laughs> buy RC it's so like bizarre but well, what about you you must have played your mates in Infuse surely yeah, uh, we've, we've played interviews once or twice. They they seem pretty solid. So they know what they're doing, you know. It's uh, just whenever, look, and again, I hate to do this to John because you know we we are we we go back away and again yeah. I managed him, worked with him in interviews. Uh, whenever I kind of what was working with him, I always felt a little bit underwhelmed by you know because he's got so much one point six experience. I was always expecting to see something amazing from him, and he seemed to be. A, not a run-of-the-mill player, but certainly only above average, if you like. Uh, is he? Has he been looking better? Or I found John's always sort of been uh, inconsistent. He'll have games where he'll just go ridiculous, you know, he'll, he'll just be dropping bombs everywhere. But then he can go on a stint where he's just not playing well at all. Um, I, you know, he's, he's always been able to hold his own. Mm-hmm. Um, uh yeah, I mean, it's just it's just sort of persistence, isn't it? He's kept on trucking. He's carried on. He definitely has. Um, <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. Again, I remember uh, going to bloody... Uh, what was it? Was it fucking... Yeah, it was Summer Slammer, I think. Or it might have been IG5. I can't remember. But he was, he was at one of them. Mm. And just he knew everybody. Like, I mean, I consider myself to be a person who's like pretty well connected, knows who people are. But John knew everybody everybody like all the 1.6s like no matter how obscure they were uh, everyone knew him it was always talking about his movies i don't even think i've watched one of his movies it, it was it was surreal it, like watching yeah, how he he's, was he's john nice guy riley isn't he you know he's he's never got a bad word to say about anyone and you know it's kept him in everyone's good books so well yeah uh, what about uh i mean again i'm gonna spit some names out at you anarchy oh. not ring any bells uh, I mean, I'm looking at the sort of unofficial seeds that are having a fantastic time on Kadrid right now. Um, I mean, there's players that I recognise the names of from Kadrid, but I mean, I've been out of the scene too long. I don't know who a lot of the people are. You know, they could be the best players in the world for all I know. You know, I, I recently got told that NBK was meant, was like this top very games player. I've I'd barely heard of him. I'm not even joking. Okay, right. but you, you have heard of Very Games, right? I mean, I know Very Games. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. I swear, MBK was not around in the era I was playing, or unless he was just in more. He, he well, in, in many ways, you could argue he's the, he's the new Sam Millen. He's, he's oh really the French Sam Millen. He's young, he's dashing, he's uh, he's got it all. He's got the world at his feet. He did it right, did he? he yeah, did. basically, instead of jumping into every new game that came out like you did, he he stuck at one and, and got good at it. So. Uh, that seems to be the blueprint that's worked for him, anyway. But yeah, I mean, you know, you, you're fam- you are familiar with very games and their success, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Can you see um, anyone but them winning? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Okay. I, mean, you know, I want. I want someone else too. Mm. Um, you know, uh, it's like it's interesting to me to see like Holm back in Seacrest. Yeah. Like he's he's a blast from the past for me. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Um, I, I remember when I first uh, installed keeping it going as well, like back in the day, and like literally, I got it pretty not long after it came out. Home was already an established competitive player. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. he were, was like one of the guys instrumental in getting the scene up and running. Like it's pretty much, yeah. It's mad to see players with that kind of experience still competing. And actually, he was just in the finals at ESWC. Yeah, you know, so yeah, he's, what he's still a, doing it, yeah, yeah. So, well, what about? Uh, I mean, again, I've got to pick your brains about this team, uh, the Isahara team. Oh God, 
Come on, bro. Lay it on me. How how do you see them doing? Uh, I I I've you know I've not seen them play at all. I have no idea. Like obviously they're good players, but I always find with those sort of teams they always clash too much and there's too much ego going on that it never ends up properly working for them. You know, the thing is though, CSS doesn't rely fantastically on teamwork that much like as much as i would say someone like 1.6 does mm. you know if, if you got the aim to kill everyone you're going to win you know so i, I don't think they're going to be very games mm-hmm. uh if they get lucky they they could beat seacrass but I, I pretty much see them placing in that third spot okay well, that's a, a good call i mean i guess it's going to come down to how well they do against the dice is rolling team with obviously the g team and Mm. And uh, again, the, the the new super kid uh, from the UK, Weber. Yeah, he's strong. Yeah, no shit, man. He's uh, he's come a long way. It wasn't that long ago he was in GE clan. Yeah, I, was, I remember I was in those MTW. Days, man. Yeah. So, uh, um, I mean, do, do you think maybe they can kind of uh, roll back the years and surprise a few people? I mean, it's a mixed team. I, as far as I know, that they've not been really practicing or anything. Mm. You know, George and Weber still have their um, MTW commitments and stuff, don't they? In fact, George is going to um, some Intel Friday night thing, isn't he? Right. Yeah, literally before just before. Land. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to get a special flight to get in and stuff. Yeah. The MTW private jet, I think it is. You know, and they're yeah. uh, going to fly kind of straight to Telford, like so. It's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're they're strong. You know, they've they've got a chance to do well. Um, but there always seems to be some little disappointment for them when they were like Raster XD. They, they never yep. seem to quite make it where they want to, do they? As far as, uh, I, I mean, us going off, I think maybe the last two lands. Mm. I think they didn't do great at the last Epic or something like that, did they? I mean, I, I have no idea how much of the team's the same team. But... It's it's fairly the same. I think George is the only yeah. change. So Yeah, I mean, they, they got the chance. Again, It's I'd, I'd say they're pretty similar to Isahara, really. You know? If it clicks, they, it's going to got... work. And if yeah. it doesn't, yeah. I'd, I'd say they have more chance of clicking because they're all like mates, aren't they? You know, they've been going at it for a long time. I mean, obviously, Isahara all know each other, like has and you know, Husey go back to fuck knows when, you know. Um, yeah, it, it can it can literally go either way. The only real constant is very games are just going to destroy everyone, and it'll be boring to watch. Yeah, well, uh, this is uh, the next thing then that I'll, I'll pick your brains about. As somebody that's been to quite a lot of iSeries and, you know, you, you're actually coming to an iSeries specifically to experience an iSeries uh, rather than, you know, because you've got any realistic chance of winning or whatnot. What is, what, what is it for you that, uh, you know, defines an iSeries, uh, you know, experience? What is it you enjoy uh, about going to these events? Because uh, you, by the sound of it, you're not even that enamoured with watching the actual games. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I might sit and watch the final, but, you know, that's about it. I mean, for, for me, like, I mean, yeah, it used to be down more to the competition back in the day, but now it's just more, um, you know, I, I do enjoy the competition when you get into it, but, I, you know, I've, I've had my hopes dashed too many times, as sad as that sounds, that, I, I, you know, I don't get uh, too up about it. I don't want to get my hopes up. You know, I've had too many times of, like, you know, to, to name an incident, for example, like the TLR team. If you remember that one at all? I do, yes. Yeah, that sort of thing. You know, that just makes the, the whole experience not fun. It becomes just a waste of money. So, you know, there's it's no point trying to get that. I, my literally, when I was making this team, I said, I, I first, you know, went to RZE uh, and Crazy. I said, you know, you want to make something for this land? Like, yeah, all right, we'll make something. And from that point, I said, right, I don't care how good they are. They just need to be sound lads that, you know, we can have a good time with. Because to me, like, if I end up having another, like, fight or something that's just going to make the land horrible and not fun, it's just a waste of time. So, I mean, it comes down more to seeing people, you know, having a good time, you know, out, like, uh, as well as those people, you know, it's, it's good to see other people that are mates within the scene that I only get to see time to time, you know, Henry, George, Damage, yeah. Arky, you know, all that lol, all really good lads, and it's, you know, good to see them. What about the uh, COD4 uh, scene at the moment? You got any thoughts about that? Because I know you played COD4 quite quite keen as well, back when that was a big game. Uh, I never really got into it. I just, you know, I, I think uh, through Morg, who you probably know, yeah, um, legend. just for Infused, yeah, he just got me into knowing all the COD4 lads and, you know, just 
became good mates with a lot of them. You know, we've we kept on seeing each other at lands. You know, I I would even go to some lands just to spectate, just so we could go out and you know see each other. And uh, you know, that's always been fun. I mean, I've no idea on the scene. I think there's dignitas and infused, and that's about it as far as I know. Might be low well, lights or something it, like that. Uh, when me and Tom were kind of <laughs> holed up in a hotel in France, you've uh, destroyed him, by the way. Yeah, I know, he's, I know. He's not the same person anymore. He's come back from that, like vietnam man it was it, yeah. it's been real hard for him to readjust to normal life because he lost everything his, yeah. his computer got smashed to pieces by air france I and mean, he's really struggled to readjust to normal life uh afterwards but he did say that as far as he's concerned cod 4 and all of this kind of flim flam about what's happening in the scene as far as he's concerned cod 4 just needs to die and we just need to move on there to the next game 10k online tournament last night I yeah mean, well, that's what I said. Yeah, but this is the other thing. I One of the things I thought would happen with the Corsair Cup was we would see guys like Tom and, and all these great players come back and compete, and they, they didn't. They they just um they, they said, no, nah, we, we can't even bother to fake it. Because Duff, Duff has signed them all up, yeah. the old reason team. So, yeah, uh, they, they were saying they're going to do it, but Tom says a lot of things and he gets to uni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know plans change um but yeah i i have no idea literally what's going on with the scene yeah i, I keep like saying to uh leo and mark and that i'm like you know why why are you still playing this game like like they don't really i, I just always think they don't actually enjoy it but every time they get back into it they do actually seem to enjoy it so i don't know i've still got leo's shoes clinging onto it for <laughs> have you? Yeah, i've still got them is that the uh night when they went back to the hotel and found you asleep in their bed yeah they the... didn't even know who you were at the time no that, that was how they met me so yeah. yeah i've still got his shoes from that, right. that that final night we spent out so they've, they've been on some... oh, he's gonna be there at this land so you know. i might bring them they've been on some <laughs> fantastic adventures I'll, oh really I'll yeah absolutely yeah. I, I've, I've, made a point... them. I've made a point of hearing made a point of wearing them even though they're like two sizes too small for me <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah. Fi- final thing, final thing before I let you go and uh, oh. get back to practicing hard uh, for I forty four. Oh, you do it too. One player. If there's one player you're gonna miss, who's not gonna be at this LAN, who is it? One player I'm gonna miss. Yeah. Um, it, it, you're making it sound like there's someone who I definitely should be saying that I'm just gonna forget entirely. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, it is putting you on the spot because obviously you know what happens if you don't say a certain name. <laughs> A message you and be like what's up with that bro but yeah so it is it is a bit bad but um you know there's got to be one there's got to be one person who made going to land for you and you know they're not there anymore or whatever they've moved on like you know for example you know it, it'd probably be uh you know benno someone like that for me like whenever he's not a yeah. land I, I just feel like it's been you know the land's like kind of been dialed down to about a seven rather than a ten you know um so who, who's it um it's probably going to be split between two people i'd say um first f- from the css would be uh stew whip mclaren mm-hmm. uh, i think i don't think he's going this one i think he's got uh cop duties I, I heard he's finally done yeah i know he's he's moving out yeah, he's properly, moving out of it properly done yeah you need, you need to get a rest in peace article going on yeah i think so man well as soon as he confirms it yeah. Uh, I, I will do. I don't think he ever will confirm it, though, will he? I, actually, I remember now, he's just started playing Skyrim. That's it. Yeah, but it's the thing. He always makes out like, oh, I've got too much police work to do, and blah, 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 blah. And then a new game. Uh, his, oh, his World of Warcraft hours were disgusting. Like, at the same time, he was saying, oh, we don't practice yeah. for the We haven't got time. And he's pumping in 80 hours a week in Warcraft <laughs> so he can have a level 85 paladin or whatever the fuck. So, horrible um, things. Anyway, the other person uh, who... Yeah, uh, Tom, of course. Always makes lands interesting. Tom Diablo Newman. Yeah, uh, he said to me he doesn't think he'll ever go back. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back. Mate, I, be I, back. I, think I've, I think his short, brief time in Cadred broke him. <laughs> I think that's it. I think he's done with lands. Screwed but um, it. Yeah, well, you know, that, that's Cadred for you, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, look, well, uh, I wish you all the best. I don't think it's going to be the best, but you know what? 9th to 12th, I'm with you. I'll, I, I'd, I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with that for you. Yeah. So uh, pass on my best to the rest of your teammates. And Cheers, mate. Um, look forward to seeing you at the event. Look forward to seeing you there, too. All right. Peace. Coming up next. Coming up next. Okay, so that was the bumper 
iSeries podcast. Don't know what it's going to weigh in at, but uh, it's going to be a whopper, I'd imagine. Hopefully it's been educational, informative, entertaining and all the rest of it. But uh, we now retire for uh, the evening to get ready for iSeries, of course, where we will be on site from i44, bringing you coverage of all of the tournaments that they have there. But before we do wrap up the podcast, I think it's only fair we take a look at a few other bits and pieces that are going on. Uh, For example, by the time you're listening to this, I imagine you will notice that we've got an L.A. Noir site skin. And um, I'm not being paid to say this or bribed by Rockstar or or my employers or anything. But if you've not played L.A. Noir uh, on the Xbox, um, certainly pick up a copy on PC. <clears throat> reviews about the game have been mixed, but I'll tell you, it's uh, it's incredible, an incredible feat, um, and certainly it's long, and certainly there are some sections that aren't very action-packed, um, and are more thought-related, you know, you've got to put a lot of uh, thought into it, because you are effectively solving crimes, but in terms of the ar- arching storyline it tells, uh, the character development, the plot, uh, the in-game mechanics, the graphics, it's uh, brilliant, it's an absolute triumph, I don't care what anyone says, so I would strongly recommend you get a copy of that, also if you've not had a dabble with it already, Rise Nexus uh, have still got their website uh, service available, completely free of charge, make your own team or clan based gaming website, and again I had a little play with it uh myself and mick he uh, he's still playing in a team with friends i obviously don't play we had a little go at putting a website together found it very easy uh, so if you haven't got one and you're a little bit intimidated about it why not sign up and just give it a bash yeah uh, there's it's really really easy if we can get our head around it here at cadred Believe me, it's it's fine. It's going to be great. So I shall leave you now in the middle of the week uh, to basically salivate at the prospect of a busy weekend in esports. Not just i series here in the UK, but of course MLG Providence is coming up, and we're going to have some features related to that. Not just StarCraft Two, but you'll have noticed League of Legends news appearing on Cadred.org, and thanks for all the feedback about that. It seems you've got a lot of uh, League of Legends fans that use Cadred that we didn't know about, so uh, thanks a lot. But yeah, and not just that, we're also going to try and cover Technopolis LAN from Argentina, a small Argentinian LAN but they came to us and asked if we'd be willing to cover it, and we thought, why the hell not? You know, we, we do like to expand into uh, you know other scenes. So a big hola to all of our Argentinian friends. But yeah, that's that for now. Listen to the theme tune. I know how much you love it. Here it is, uncut. The Catred.org podcast, your weekly guide to the world of esports news, presented by Richard Lewis.